because you got somebody you can call on. I say, I say the energy is in here. Maybe so much. I always know what it is because you know y'all tongue can cut. Watch what you say to your son ever. I say, and then you want to call us up to come in and play the damn cops. Walk in the house and dads. It's a beast. It's going to be some vampires in there. Like, damn. They look like people, don't they? You think they human? Ready to give up? Everybody was there. Cousins, grandpa with a cane. I said, damn. Y'all want to fight the man just because he want to see a scene? Whether the door locked or not. You think my psychology always going to work? Hell no. Some brothers are straight third. I don't want to hear that. You got three master's degree. You ain't my master. Damn. Doctor who? I never see you all, bro. Stop laughing. Up under your skirt and never get that masculine structure. He might start wanting to wear one. He will fix himself. I'm healthy as a mother. We ain't gonna talk about that. I don't even want to shake her. <laughs> but she can. Cause you'll, Cause you'll get a restraining, get a restraining order. order. Guilty as hell. And if you think, then she not even cute. Hey, why you playing with your meat, son? I can't do that, but I can't come out and tell her that. And she become the biggest buck wild at Morgan. Yeah, and a few other people. My God, there's nothing worse than going in front of a white man and say, can I see my daughter? And one time the judge looked at me and said, wait a minute, I know your face. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> he was on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Judge knew who I was, but I was able to get out of it. Because he would have never gave me my baby. I know what I'm talking about. When I'm done, they don't want sex no more. Homo, hetero, nothing. Every time I wanted a cookie, I saw a herpes. Damn. Damn. And fellas, I want to be clear now. When we go back to take over the community, because we're going to have to do it, gentlemen. You can't expect the cops to fix this because they started it. But I want to be clear. I know some of us love our children, but some of our children are so far gone that we're going to have to put some of them to sleep in order to take back the neighborhood. Some of y'all don't want to hear that because you don't live in reality. But I'm telling you as a psychologist, I'm not going to be able to psychologize all of them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for good, for good, for good. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning on in. Cook Kershaw is undefeated. Uh, we've got a very special show this evening. Your discretion is advised. Let's get it. Here we go. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming, FDMG, it's coming, 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 it's coming. MG is coming, thought it's personality be twerking, it's twerking. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning on in. I hope everyone's having a wonderful, wonderful start to their new year. Uh, boy, we got so much to get into. Yesterday's live stream was a uh, doozy. And I, I want to apologize to everybody because I, I, I felt like I just got so blowed off, as Umar says, by uh, what we were watching. Uh, and it really was as a side note we got into. And so we're going to get into that particular video today and go uh, in on it. I want to apologize because um, uh, sometimes, and it doesn't happen often, but sometimes with Umar, the, the, he says things in his behavior too. It's so far out there that it just, it's uh, not that it's, I can't say that I don't expect it because I've seen it. I've, I've studied this guy. I've researched extensively. Uh, 
but sometimes he goes so far out there that it's like I just don't know. I don't know how to to process it. That's the best way that I can say. It. I can't say that I, I was gonna say I don't know how to handle it, but that's not it. I can't. I don't know how to process it. I'm, I'm trying to make it make sense. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. And uh, yesterday, I just I just could not do it. You know. So it, yesterday's live stream was a bit of a struggle. Uh, today, we're gonna focus on the video. Uh, it's a super super soaker, uh, pajama mama rant that umar did back in october i believe it was and i wasn't uh, doing umar videos during that time so i didn't catch it okay somehow some way someone sent me an email uh it was probably about a month ago maybe three and a half weeks ago something like that i can't even remember how long ago it was and they said you need to check this out he's being very disrespectful towards black women and i never got around to looking at it but i did download it and then we played a little bit of it yesterday and here we are today we're going to get into it full force um one of the challenges for me with Umar is uh, I still have hope that he can get his life turned around. And though I criticize him and it's much deserved, the criticisms are much deserved. Um, I don't lie on the guy, uh, though I criticize him. Part of it is that I want him to understand that it's not too late for him to turn his life around. But then when you see a video like we're going to get into today, viewer discretion advised, it just makes me sit back and say, you know what, maybe maybe it's just not going to happen. I would like to see it happen. But maybe it's not going to happen. Uh, and at some point, it, it, I, if that is the truth, I have to come to grips with that and be OK with that. You know, I want to thank everyone for tuning on in. I want to thank the Cookie Crush chat uh, undefeated as always. want to thank the mods. Also, everyone who's been very supportive of the channel. Uh, thank you all so very much. I appreciate each and every one. Like I, I promised yesterday that we're going to get right into it. I'm not going to go off to start. So we're going to get right into it right here today. All right. Okay, uh, and oh, it is 104 likes already. That's great. We already got about 450 people in the building. Thank y'all so much. If y'all haven't hit the like button, you know, go on ahead and hit that like button. Thanks so much, uh, Saggy Bob. Uh, happy New Year, Daryl. Happy New Year to you as well. Big sis Candace, happy New Year. And Ju Judah, happy New Year. Ben, uh, happy New Year, Divine. Happy New Year, Dominique. Happy New Year, East B. Happy New Year, Black Dev. Uh, happy New Year, Lady Happy Still Rains. Happy New Jimmy Jamboree. <laughs> All right, okay, Bobby. Happy New Year. All right, so let's get into it uh, for today. Here is the video that we're going to focus on, and uh, it's a dude. It's about an hour long, so it's going to take us a while to get through it. And then there's another video that someone sent me yesterday. If we have time, we'll get to that and also have the Brother Whit video pulled up here, too. Okay, here we go. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. What's up, Billie Jean? Can you all hear the audio? Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde, coming to you live and direct from Capitol Heights, Maryland. Capitol Heights, Maryland. Capitol Heights, Maryland. I want to thank everyone. Okay, this is from October 3rd, 2023. I completely missed this video. Everyone. Okay, came cool. out yesterday for the Nat Turner Earth Thanks, Day Father. celebration. How's it going, first time in Nat Turner land. That is Druryville, Virginia celebrating the birthday of the greatest revolutionary to ever walk on American soil, the late prophet Nat Turner. Thank you for everyone who came out and showed love and support. And we will be back in Nat Turner land next month, 11-11, for Nat Turner's memorial celebration. That's the day Nat Turner was taken from us. He was hanged a few blocks away from the Southampton County Courthouse on November the 11th, 1831. So we will be back. Brothers and sisters, I wanted to do a check-in with black parents. I wanted to do a check-in with black parents. I wanted to do a check-in with black parents before I hit the road here in Capitol Heights, Maryland. I was trying to drive back to Philadelphia last night from Nat Turner land. I was trying to drive back to Philadelphia last night from Nat Turner land. I was trying to drive back to Philadelphia from Nat Turner land. I got tired. By the way, there's scammers down there too. That Nat Turner land stuff, there's scammers down there too. And I have receipts on that. Hey, the person sent me this. This was, I just pulled it up. This was back in 2020. They'd send me pictures. They send me de uh, uh, so-called deeds. These, they're, they're scammers down there too. Hired and I ended up right here in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Shout out to Dr. Baruch and Everlasting Life Cafe and all my Capitol Heights, Maryland Africans. When I saw Umar promoting Nat Turner's land a couple of years back, I immediately knew he was working with such and such. 
I sent them a message on IG letting him know uh, that we had paid on the same land and had received nothing. I was later blocked, so I assumed they were scamming people together. And pictures, I got pictures, receipts, everything. They sent me everything. Doing these people like this. Boy, I tell you. But let's keep going. I'll tell people, I'll know so. I've done, I, boy, I got so many receipts. Maryland is the state of my paternal ancestors. As you know, I'm always on the Pan African War Trail. And because I'm always on the Pan African War Trail, Sometimes I don't get enough time to check in with black parents who may not necessarily be conscious, who may not necessarily be pan-Africanist, who may not necessarily be politically inclined. So today, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm gonna give black parents nine tips to deal with the current school year. This is not the black parent boot camp. We will be doing a black parent boot camp at least once a month. This is not the black parent boot camp. We will be doing a black parent boot camp at least once every month because of my responsibilities including fdmg academy i can't do black parent boot camp every week but i do promise that i will do my best to bring you a black parent boot camp at least once a month so today's topic here in capitol heights maryland nine things every black parent should know nine things every black parent should know nine things every black parent should know number one as soon as the school year begins number one as soon as the school year begins you should try to get the contact information for as many black parents in your child's classroom and school as possible this is what? a big mistake black parents make this is a big mistake black parents make Y'all don't start looking for other parents to communicate with until your child gets in trouble. Please you black parents what, don't start wait, looking wait, 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 wait. to to connect with other black parents <laughs> until your am, child gets in trouble. That's too late. I'm trying to have a, a, a quick. We're gonna be here quick too. This ain't gonna be a long live stream. Okay, we we live stream. What was it? Two days in a row already. We gonna get this. Gonna be quick. We had to get to this today. But here we go. <laughs> I done told you to change your tab, screen to whatever. Anyway, that's too late. Dr. Umar Ifatunde is telling you the first day of school, soon when you see another black parent whose child is in your child's classroom, ask them for their phone number. You know, essentially he seems so calm here, but what we what the, the part that we saw, he was raging. Something happened. We'll see. Get all of them. If your child is at a predominantly white school, you can get every black parent's number. Let me say this again. If your child is at a predominantly black student school, you need all the black parent contacts for your child's classmates. All the black parent contacts for your child's classmates. If your child attends a predominantly white school, you want the contacts for every black parent you can find. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you overstand? Do you understand? You need allies in this war to save your child and too many black parents are going through the same thing too many black parents are going through the same thing for y'all to be fighting by yourself the first month of school is all about collecting the contact information for other black parents walk up to them how you doing my son and your son is in the same class would you mind if I take your phone number in case we need to have a conversation down the road? Your daughter and my daughter attend the same school. If you don't mind, I would like to get your phone number in case we need to have a conversation down the road. Start getting the contact information. What is he talking about? Listen, that's not how, that's how, listen, he, ain't, he, ain't, he hasn't raised any children. He don't know. He, he has no idea. You don't go up to random people and say, let me get your phone number because our child both go to the same school. They're in the same class. I don't care. Parents said that the most said, what? Who, who's you? What you talking about? I don't know. You want me to get it? Umar, you can tell he's he hasn't raised any kids. He's an absentee father. He can't tell you one story on any given day about his children. I can give you story after story every single day. 
many of y'all, y'all can do the same thing. For other black parents, stop waiting until your child is in a crisis and now you don't have the contact information for other children. When a lot of your children get into these behavioral situations where other children are involved and you need to talk to the other parent, but you don't have the other parent contact, that's your fault. That's your fault. That's your fault. When you need to talk to other black parents, but you don't have other black parents contact information, that's your fault. You should have had their contact information the first month of school. This way you could have talked to them. Never let the school know you're keeping in contact with other black parents. Never let the school know you're keeping in contact with other black parents. Never let the school know you're keeping in contact with other black parents. Black mothers, you have to discipline your mouth box. Black mothers, you have to discipline your mouth box. You talk too much, you tell the school too much. The school don't need to know which parents you are friendly with. They don't need to know that. They are not your friend. No school is your friend. Not the charter school, not the public school. The way you talking, you ain't nobody's friend, especially the women. He just, he's so disrespectful to you, black women. He just, he's so disrespectful. By the way, let me tell y'all something real quick. Why is it that you greasy? At, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to do it. I was going to do it. I, I, let me stop. I got told. Okay. Why is it that you males, when I speak on black women being disrespected, that's when you got a problem. You guys would be amazed. Y'all be, be commenting, yeah, rah, rah, rah. But then when I speak on black men disrespecting black women, and I ain't even talking about y'all, I'm talking about Umar, but you know you the reason why you have an issue is because you're disrespectful towards black women too. You don't want to hear the truth. So that's when you start running them, popping up off the mouth. Kind of man. Well, you know, and also, yeah, but you wasn't saying that when I was talking about all this other stuff. But as soon as I bring up the disrespect of black women, all of a sudden, you you black men, you start uh, uh, talking, sounding all sassy. So tired of y'all. Anyway, it happens every time too. Every single time, I can do, I can do ten Umar Johnson videos where I'm not specifically talking about Umar's disrespect of black women. But then when I do a video like yesterday, where it's clearly evident, and in this video he is too, and I just point it out. That's all I do. I point it out. Then all of a sudden, y'all get in your feelings, and y'all let me wash my. It happens every single time too, and and it, and if you wanted them men, don't just don't come up, just unsubscribe. Don't even come up over there because go up over here. I ain't trying to deal with you anyway. Y'all, y'all the problem. Y'all want to be, but yeah, white people, white people, this white supremacy. No, 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 no. It's you, you those type of black men. Y'all the problem. Same thing with the Umar type. Always whining and complaining. Oh, and I got to, and you know the white man this, but then he turned around, he running through you black women. He don't pay his child support. He's an absentee. If that's you. Get on up out of here, unless you're trying to change for the better. Don't get all sassy as soon as I spe start speaking on that. Just about as sassy as you want to be, uh, all in your feelings. Well, guess what? If you ain't that type of man, you ain't worth. You ain't, ain't you, you like yeah, but you know what? Yeah, you're right about that. If you if you that type if you that, ain't that type of man, you 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 know take care of your family. You ain't out here running through these women. You ain't up up here uh, trying trying to. Uh, uh, get cookies all the time and scamming and skeezing. They on child support for 20, always complain. He wasn't complaining when you was in them skins, but you complain when you're supposed to do, when the court, when that, that's a doggone shame because you should handle your business anyway as a man. Well, it's too expensive. Go get a second job. It's still, well, go get a third job. Okay? It's really that simple. But you want to get real sassy as soon as I bring up these issues. Well, guess what? This is not a place for you. And there's plenty of other places you can go on YouTube. There's literally hundreds of millions of YouTube pages. There's probably a, a billion at least of YouTube pages. A lot of them defunct, ain't people still on there, but it's going on going up over there because this is not the place for you. Same thing with these, these anyway, let me stop because I, I, to, I told people I was going to just, we're going to get to it and we're going to get to it. Here we go. Not the private school, not the parochial school, not the independent school. You don't have friends inside of your child's school. Let me say that again. You don't have friends inside of your child's school. I want to make that very, very clear. You don't have friends inside your child's school. 
So the principal doesn't need to know that you are friends with another child's parent because he he act, he act like parents are all in, in the principal. They talk every day. And it's not like that anymore. What are you talking about? He has no clue. He's supposed to be. He's never been in the classroom as an educator, too, by the way. He's never taught one child. But it's clear he don't even know how things work in the school system. It's not like you're talking to the principal every time. But see, that's that's his uh, uh, delusion about FDMG, that people are going to be talking with him. I want to talk to him all the time. And the women going to come up there and they want to talk with him about their kid. And that, that's Umar. That's his, you know how Umar is, well, his imagination. But that's not how it is in reality. That's why they have vice principals and they got counselors. You mainly be dealing with the counselors. You may even deal with the teachers. OK, but but you ain't. Then the next thing is the is the vice principals or vice principals. Sometimes they have two or three of them depending on the size of the school. And then you get to the principal. But it's not like you're talking to the principal. Don't tell the principal who you, you have the phone numbers. What are you talking about, Scooby Doo? Everything is some big old mystery with this guy. Like you got to be sneaky in these these uh, classroom streets in the school streets. It's not Umar. you have no idea what you're talking about because you ain't raised no kids. You never know when you and that other child's parent are going to have to work together to protect your child or their child. You never know when the other child's parent and you will have to work together to protect your child or their child. Never let the school know what cards you have in your hand. Never let the school know what cards you have in your hand. So that's number one. Get other parents contact. Get other parents contact. Get other parents contact. That's number one. <laughs> what, what I just got invited to it? speak in Tennessee. I just got invited to speak in Tennessee, October the 28th. We're going to see about that. My Tennessee Africans, I might be coming back sooner than we thought. October the 28th, I will be in Omaha, Nebraska, December the 2nd. I will be in Omaha, Nebraska for the second time ever on December the 2nd. I might be in Brazil <laughs> in November. Yeah, we still I might be in Brazil one. in November. <laughs> and I will be back in that Turner land on November the 11th. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. You know, that's bad when you wake up talking, man. You... And you know what? <laughs> What's going on? It's like, hey, can't you... Hey, go go you know go brush the teeth go take a shower go go have a cup of uh, a java i don't know whatever people do <laughs> umar wake up talking mess <laughs> be... cookie crust chat boy get him under the cookie crust chat boy oh god <laughs> umar, stop okay here we go number two keep track of all your child's suspensions and detentions Keep track of all. Why is he assuming that your child is, has detention and suspensions? What 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 is he talking about? And multiple. Keep track of all of them. I, I don't know. I don't. I really don't get. I don't get that. With Umar. We gonna keep going. all your child's suspensions and detentions. Keep track of all your child's suspensions <laughs> and detentions. Don't leave it up to the school to keep track of suspensions and detentions because hey, schools often bury suspension notices, especially for special ed children. School <laughs> Boogie said, tired of this dude. All he do is talk. Yeah, that's what all he do. And he's on, he's on uh, uh, social media every single all day, every day, every single day. All, I mean, he, he's posting memes. He's posting uh, videos. He's live streaming every single day. He's doing something on social media. And all he do is talk. Thankful soup that tie boogie and Merry, uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Lewis Suck says, so if my kid is failing, call some random black people to straighten them out. Got it, Umar. What money advice you got for me? <laughs> you don't want no money. I tell you what his money advice is. Get on your cash app. That's his money advice. Get on your PayPal. That's his, that's his money advice. But yeah, uh, th th I was thinking about that. You're just going to, you want to get some random, random person's uh, phone number to communicate with them. That's not how things work, people. Uh, most people are private when it comes to, you know, their, their children being in school and stuff. Now, if something happens, then OK, but they're not just giving trying to get the numbers of random people and giving out your, your number to random people. That's not even safe to do something like that. It's not. You know, uh, I just just in my mind, I can think of a scenario where a parent has another parent's phone number. And uh, let's say the other parent maybe is uh, the, 
doesn't have the, the child's best interest in heart for whatever reason. And, you know, they go up to the child that's the other parent's uh, child says, hey, listen, uh, your mom just called me, told me uh, to, to take you home. Look, I have her phone number. Here it is right here. She just called me. No, no, no. Is it is it uh, likely that something like that would happen? No. But is it possible? Yes. And the possibility is enough for me to not just give out my number to any random person. But Umar, he, he's, he don't even think about any of this stuff because he, he doesn't deal with children. Here, here is the thing, because I thought about this as I get in these these black men that's been sassy over over, uh, over the last day. But I've been getting them too, especially some of these guys from over there in Africa. Y'all stay over in your lane because you all know what you're talking about anyway. You all y'all young. You have no idea. But I was thinking about this uh, idea because there are people who say things like, well, you know, you shouldn't be doing videos on Umar. I can do videos on whoever I want to. OK, you shouldn't be telling another man what he should be doing with his time. But the, but the real <coughs> excuse me, the real issue is. The real issue is. Whose responsibility is it to protect women and children? Someone even said, no, well, let's just let God deal with it. I don't want to hear all that. Whose responsibility is it to protect women and children? That's the men's responsibility, traditionally. But that's not what we see when it comes to these online Internet-based black leaders. You don't see black, uh, many black men standing up and speaking out against them or supporting those who do. You don't see a lot of that. But whose responsibility is it to keep women and children safe in the first place? But that's the men. And that's one of our major failings as black men is that we don't do that enough. Some of us don't do it at all. And then you have a black man who seeks to do it. And for good for good reason. Look how Umar talk. Look how he talks about black women. Look at the types of things that he said about children. And then all of a sudden you got all these. these well, it's not a lot, but you got these other black men and they want to get sassy about it simply because I'm doing what man, what, what a man should do, whether it is online or in his community, meaning in his physical uh, uh, domain, if you will. That's what we're supposed to do. That's like saying, you know, uh, there's a, a place on the planet where there's starvation taking place and there's only enough food for uh, uh, it's not enough food for everybody. What do the men do? Well, the men fast. And they make sure that the women and the children get as much food as they can. The men fast. If, if there's a storm and it can't you can't fit all of the, the, the family in that all of the different the people in that community into a building to keep them safe. OK, well, the men stand outside. You put the women and the children on the inside. That's why when they had they used to say things like, OK, if a ship is going down, uh, uh, women and children first. Where where does that uh, where did that go for us as black men? So it, this is what I'm saying, wh whether it is for us uh, being the protectors of uh, women and children in our own lives as a father, as a husband. Whether it is in our communities, meaning other women, other children, or it's online, the same rule should, should apply. And for you men who don't understand that there's something wrong with you. For all of our failings, and I've had plenty of them, okay, I'm talking about us at General as Black Men. One of our main issues is that we fail to protect our, our, our women and our children. And then when you have men who stand up to do that, y'all want to get sassy. Anyway. I say that to say that even Umar, you can tell he doesn't have a sense of being protective of women or obviously, but of children either. So how is he going to be a principal of the school? You're going to be giving your phone number out to random people? No, it's not not going to happen. Thanks, Lewis. Look, immigrants is the man uh, is the uh, main priority, not us. <laughs> I I immigrants is the man priority. I don't know what you said. That was from earlier. That was from from like. Uh, nine minutes ago uh the geo scholar says didn't umar get fired for harming children no 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 not physically harming children no no no, not from my research so i don't i don't want to uh, put that out there what i can say is that he and he admitted it that he has 
uh, supervised visitations. And I did a, a show to talk about that. And I, I, I looked it up in the state of, uh, of Pennsylvania. There's very specific reasons why a court would order a parent to have supervised visitations. And one of them is if the child, if the parent is a danger to the child. But see, the danger to the child could be physical. It could be emotional. Uh, it could be uh, it could be it could even be uh, mental. You know, uh, there's other ones, too, that I don't want to say here. But just be clear about that. A court would not order something like that unless the that parent was a danger to that child. There's also an extension of that. If that parent is a danger to the other parent, see, and 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 the other parent is not safe, it doesn't isn't considered to be safe around uh, the parent that has been given supervised visitations. And Umar, he talked about this. He's talked about this. All right. Thanks, Joe Scholar, for the super chat. Also, thanks, Ty Book. Thanks, Lewis, for the super chat as well. CEO uh, sent the super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Happy New Year to you. Uh, Umar is better off using chat GPT. <laughs> no, but the thing, Tiny, with Umar is, um, and, and we're going to see it because if you notice when he starts off this video, every, he seems kind of calm. And the only reason why we decided to do this video is because we watched a, sni a, a section of this video and he was ranting. It's, it's wild. That's why I have to say viewer discretion. We're going to get to that part in a little while. I don't know where it's at in the video, but we'll get to it in a little while. But but I wanted to understand why he got to that point or how did he get to that point? You see, and, and if this was a script, it's almost like you start off. He, he has, a, a, you know, he's a bit calm and then he starts to get a little bit more out of control and then a little bit more. And by the time we get to the section that we get into, he's he's all the way out here. I don't know if you saw the live from yesterday, but that's why I had to say uh, viewer discretion is advised because I played some of it yesterday and I knew uh, that today I had to make that um that statement just to, to keep people uh, safe because yesterday I had to apologize because the stop stuff that was coming out of Umar's mouth it, it just it's uh, it's it was so out there so disrespectful. Uh, thanks, Tanya, for the super chat as well. Geo Scott says what I meant uh, by harming isn't physical. I was talking about him misdiagnosing. Yes, yes, um, he was fired for for that. But but it's it's on it's on it was on the flip side. In in other words, th these children were already diagnosed. What he was doing was trying to get. Uh, it's, it's just like basically getting paid twice, because if you're a school psychologist and, and you're, you have one job, but you, you're going to get paid for that. But if you if you start to uh, it's, it's, I, there's a term that he used. I can't remember what, what the, uh, the term is. Um, I, I can't remember uh, off the top of my, my head right now, but I've done all the research. And so anyway, anyway, what ended up happening was he he, he was promoting this idea. And, and if you guys listen to early Umar, he used to talk a lot about this. His first book is based upon this. Um, how these children were misdiagnosed. There wasn't anything wrong with them. So what he would do was he would in, he would uh, talk with the parents of, of these children. He would target them too. He would talk with the parents and get them to say, hey, wait a minute, this this is uh, we need to go and, and uh, uh, have this child checked out again. And guess who does it? Umar does it. And so he basically, they, the child's already been diagnosed. And yeah, the, there are misdiagnoses that take place. But what, but what he was attempting to do was to always to go against what the original diagnosis was. So therefore, the, the parent can file suit against the school district. Umar is a sixer because what he ended up doing, and see, he ended up getting fired for this because uh, if you, he, it's profitable. Okay, it's very profitable. But he, get, he ended up getting fired for this because at a certain point, the school system, uh, the, the school, the school uh, district, they were having to pay lawyer fees. They would have to uh, pay out to these these uh, families. If you listen carefully to Umar, he used to talk about this too. He used to break down the numbers and everything. Okay, that was his hustle back then. But in, the, inevitably, they ended up firing him, and they walked him out. Security came. They gave him a box. They walked him out, and that was it. Umar, and that's why Umar he can he his reputation precedes him. Think about this: How do you have six degrees, and you claim to be Big Papa? the greatest psychologist in human history. I've heard him say things like this. He says next to Amos Wilson, these types of things. How, how is that? How is it possible that you have six degrees? You're, you have a PhD that's associated with, it's a, it's a PsyD, but uh, you're, it's associated with uh, uh, psychology, but you can't even get a job in the Philadelphia school district anymore. Now, listen, some people will say, well, look how he acts. No, I'm talking about the timeline with Umar. We're not talking about Umar 2014, 15, 16, 17. We're going way, way back. How is it possible? Well, because his reputation precedes him. That, that gets around because it was costing the school district. I don't even want to tell you all how much money it was costing. It, it, it was it's significant. We're not just talking $100 here, $1,000, $10,000 here. See? And that was Umar's hustle. 
because he basically he's able to double up on he's getting paid because when he does these the extra diagnoses, he's actually getting paid for that. He he broke these the figures down and everything. He broke all this. The, these are early video uh, uh, Umar Johnson videos. So that's why Umar, he his employment history is minimal as a school psychologist. He said he's a school principal. I have yet to see any uh, proof of that. Now, maybe he was. I've yet to find one shred of evidence online or otherwise, because I've talked to people who were around him during that time. And they, they, they were like, no, I, I don't know. He's never he said he was a, initially he said he was a vice principal. And then over the years, then he started saying that he was a principal. But that's what Umar Johnson does. Everything is like over the top. He may start with a little lie, but he, over time, he just builds it up more and more and more and more. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's why Umar Johnson is not allowed. Uh, he, he can't uh, get a job in Philadelphia, and that's where he's from. I'll propose that at this point, and I'm talking about the, uh, Umar from back then. At this point, he couldn't get a job anywhere. Look at how he talks. Look at how he behaves, the types of things that he talked about killing uh, black boys, how we need to kill police officers. That the, the, the little girls who've been R.A., uh, that their their thoughts. Which means the holes over there, that those holes over there. See, that's why people always. Well, why don't he has all these degrees? Why don't. Well, that's that's well, that's the, that's one of the reasons why his reputation precedes him. He doesn't even talk about that either. He don't talk about that. But he knows and I know. And there are a few, there are other, I shouldn't even say a few, but there are a few people that I've talked with, firsthand accounts, they know what was going on back then. Because okay? it's no, there's no reason to have this, uh, allegedly six degrees in a, in a Psy D and you can't get a job as a school psychologist anywhere. All right. Thanks, Joe Scholar. Uh, for Super Jet. Vegan Sports Bar says, are you still considering a second uh, shock committee on the subject of Umar uh, sexual deviancy. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But I, I have said some things in the last couple of videos, if you guys can uh, read the tea leaves as it were, because I've been going into the archive. That's why I've been pulling up stuff uh, to refresh myself, but I, I'm not making any public statements and I'm not alluding to anything right now. <laughs> okay, I'm with, no, in other words, I'm going to say no right now, okay? We're going to leave it at that. We ain't going to get into that right now. <laughs> Vegan Sports Bar was like, hmm, why did he say that in that video the other day? Hmm. Okay. But no, no, I'm going to say no right now. Right? <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, Vegan Sports Bar. Lewis says, says he's going to have a resort. Uh, he's going to have to resort to setting up an OnlyFans wearing an open. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't do this. An open belly shirt and chaps uh, the, with the back pockets. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't do that, uh, Lewis. <laughs> like, my goodness. Uh, Umar did one one time. He did say that he was going to start an Oli fans. I'm not making it up, y'all. Hit the one because and I, I don't I don't care. I don't even have, know if I have it archived. I never lie on this guy. <laughs> I've never had never have never was not necessary because I got receipts upon receipts. But Umar actually said he was going to start an Oli fans. Y'all, if y'all remember Umar saying that, hit the one in the, in the chat room so y'all can back me up on this. <laughs> he did say that, though. All right. Thanks, Lewis Luck. Uh, Sigmund Hightower says, what the H-E-L-L? Uh, -L? I've never gotten a suspension or detention. Every child is in this situation. Well, this is the thing with Umar. The way that he sees uh, his school is, and really the way he conceptualized the public education system, all of the children are rambunctious they're out of control these are black children too by the way they're out of control they're, they're uh, uh intellectually inferior you you know they're late he said these types of things that they're lazy he never said that they're intellectually inferior he actually used to say the opposite but if you hear him talking about black children it, it would come off as if they're all bad you know the intellectually inferior uh he's he said things like uh, they're lazy you know that's that's why you're not getting good grades and if you go back to early umar he used to talk like this a lot uh, he does still does these days, but early. Well, no, no, I shouldn't say earlier. Let's say mid Umar. I, I should put together a, a time because early Umar is, is really UNIA days. Uh, then you got the the Capera Charter School days, and that's when he actually functioned as a school uh, a, a psychologist, a school psychologist. And then you start to get uh, him getting deeper into the Black conscious community. That and that can actually be uh, uh, the the third phase of Umar. But then you get into by the time you get into 2014, yeah, in around 2014. Now you get into the school scam, Umar Johnson. Okay. 
And, and, and as, as in terms of the timeline, that's where uh, Umar Johnson has made the most amount of money. But that's also the, the, the period of time, that fourth stage of Umar Johnson, wherein he's deteriorated the most and his life has, has you know, it's just it's turned out to I was going to say I ain't going to say that because then it reminds me of what he was saying yesterday. But it, everything falls apart. OK, um, same thing, like I was uh, talking about earlier. The children, they've been suspended. Keep track of how many times your child's been suspended, how many times there. You see, that that's how he thinks about black children. But then he also thinks that black, he always uh, puts this to, this is another important point. Umar always frames black children within the scope of a single black mother. There's no black men around. There's no black fathers around. Which fits his narrative in terms of his, in, which fits his intent, which is he wants to gain access to you single black mothers so he can get money out of you under the promise that he's going to take care of your child. He's going to make sure he's safe. He's going to make sure that he's educated, he's protected from the school to prison uh, 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 pipeline. But also he does that because he wants to gain access to your cookies. You see? So you, Umar rarely, if he rarely, I can't say it fair because he has done it a couple of times, but very, very, very rarely does Umar frame the conversation when we talk about black children within the scope of a unified family. You got a, the husband, you have the wife, you have the father and the mother working together. It's always a single black mother. But then on top of that, if, if it's a single black mother, it's always as if she's the problem in terms of her character. And that's what we're going to get to in this video. That there's something wrong with her, but that's why she needs him to come save the day, Big Papa. He, he, listen, Umar will say things about black women and make y'all feel like he, he cares about you and blah, blah, but he's just running game. He has a disdain for black women, a deep-seated hatred for black women, and any black man who, who lives a sexually promiscuous lifestyle like Umar Johnson done with the bumpity bump, you can't say that he loves black women. Can I tell you, let me share something with y'all today. Let me share something with y'all today. So, y'all know I've been talking about how I've been doing car repairs. And I had done, I would repaired the ABS sensor on the vehicle because the ABS light had come on. And the mechanic said it was a 50-50 chance that it's the ABS sensor or it's the wheel bearing that needs to be replaced, or it could be both. So the, the type of person I am, because I, I, I know how to do basic car repair, the type of person I am, I said, if it's, in my mind, I said, uh, if, if it's a 50-50 chance, why don't I go ahead and replace the sensor, okay? Instead of paying 600, Initially, the initial estimate was uh, 580 bucks, but he went up to 610. And I said, told myself, okay, 50 50 chance. Uh, let me go ahead and give it a try. So I ordered the part. I even bought some tools, you know, some of the tools I'm going to be using in the future. So I figured it, it's cost effective anyway. I said, if this works out, 50 50 chance, what I'll do is I'll end up saving about $400. Because I, I had to buy the part. Uh, and I had to put in, no, actually about saved about 400. I thought I would save about 450, dollars I had to buy the part, buy some tools to actually get the job done. Okay. So I did the repair, uh, yesterday and that's why I was uh, extra late yesterday. And, uh, when I did the test drive, it didn't correct the problem. I even after the live stream yesterday, I actually went and I did it again, uh, and, uh, to see if it I went and tested it still didn't correct the problem. So it was still an issue. So I called the mechanic this morning. And I said, I told him what the situation was. I said, I did. It replaced the ABS uh, sensor. You said it was 50-50 chance. It didn't correct the problem. Can I bring it in uh, today uh, to have you guys? And I even researched to see how to do the wheel bearings. I, and I could have done it, but I shouldn't be messing with that. I said, you know what? <laughs> enough is enough. Plus, there's, there's opportunity co uh, calls, too, uh, when you do that. You, I can You spent that time doing something different. So I took the car uh, over there, and then... Uh, I drove it back with the uh, mechanic, one of his mechanics, and then the mechanic drove the car back over. So I had to catch Uber back, Uber back over here. I'm following me on here. Fo follow me on this. So I had to catch Uber uh, uh, to go pick the car up. And when I went and, and picked the car up, the Uber driver uh, picked me up, and we, we were having this conversation inside the car. 
And this guy, he was a real cool dude. He looked a lot, he looked younger, but we was talking, he was in his 60s, uh, 60s. He said he was semi-retired. He says, I only do this for extra money. He said he was an electrical engineer, had a, a uh, did very well for himself, him and his wife, and he had uh, his, uh, children. Uh, uh, I think he said he had five children or something, or six children, something like that. All of them went to college. He said, yeah, we, we were really blessed. And really, really cool guy. But then at a certain point, I don't know how we got onto this topic because uh, I was talking to him and, and he said uh, something about, yeah, everything uh, like on the outside of the car, all the sounds on the outside of the car, if someone honks or anything like that. I can't hear any of that. And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, I'm deaf. I said, are you serious? He says, yeah, I'm deaf. And then I looked because he was sitting in the front seat and he had the, the you know, the ear things on. And he said, if he takes those off, he can't hear he can't hear anything. He says he actually prefers to take them off because he's 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 lived like that. He's in his 60s. He says he prefers to not have to hear anything. And he says when he hears people talk, his brain is able to figure out what they're saying. And he does can't hear everything, but he hears well enough. But they have to be in a certain distance from uh, uh, where he's at. So he can't hear like outside the car. But me sitting back in the backseat, he was hearing. fascinating story. And I said, well, um, uh, and he says, yeah, me, me and my uh, old, the older three in our in our family, I'm going follow me on this. The early three, the oldest three, uh, the older three in our family uh, of my of my siblings, uh, we're all deaf. And then he says the other I think he said five. I think it was eight altogether, something like that. He said they, they all uh, they, they can hear. And I says, well, did they ever figure out why you three? Because uh, it was fascinating to me. I had no idea this guy could. He, he was deaf. I said, do you have any idea why it was that you three? We're, we're born deaf and the, uh, and the rest of them were not. And he and he, he paused. He says, well, I'll tell you, he says, uh, my father uh, used to cheat on, on my mother. And he cheated a lot and he cheated while she was pregnant with us. And he he gave her STDs. What's, what's a man's primary responsibility, right, is to keep women and children safe. And I said, OK, so what does that have to do with you guys being being uh, coming out death? He says, well, it can happen where there's certain STDs that, that for a baby in the womb, uh, they uh, will uh, be born death. I, and I had no idea about that. No idea whatsoever. And I said, well, is that the same case today? Because he's in his 60s. He says, no, that happens even to this day. These things happen. Remarkable story. And I learned something. I was even talking uh, to my wife about it uh, uh, today. Uh, and, uh, and she says, no, that can happen. She says, yeah, I actually studied that a long time ago where things like that can happen. Uh, what's the, what, what point am I getting to here, though? Ladies and gentlemen. Well, if you're a man and you got the bumpity bump. And you out here with reckless abandon running through black women, what does that say about you? And, and what does that say about you as a man neglecting your primary responsibility as being the protectors of women and children? You're putting the women's lives uh, in jeopardy and their health, I should say, in jeopardy. And you're also putting uh, potential children that may be born out of these types of situations, you're putting their health in jeopardy and, and to a certain point where they can be born deaf. Matter of fact, my wife said, yeah, and also that can, that, that contributes to uh, uh, babies that are born, uh, born with deformities. I did not know that. Y'all won't get sassy with me when I talk, speak on these types of issues about how black women are being taken advantage of, mistreated and disrespected. This dude that was driving wasn't black, but that ain't even the point. You won't get sassy with me. And look at Umar. You shouldn't be talking about him. You need to shut your. You, that, you see, that's what I'm saying. Y'all the problem. Umar the problem. Y'all the problem too. Running, running through these women like this with a bumpity bump. Some of you men, you just like Umar anyway. That's why you follow him and you defend him.
you about as good as a penny with a hole in it. I ain't playing with y'all today. Uh, thanks for the super chat, uh, Sigma. Sagi, uh, Sagi, uh, Bob says, Do you have any footage of Umar's sexy office in the other abandoned trap bando? No, uh, in the other, you talking about the other side of the street? I don't remember a time, and I could be wrong because I he hasn't been in there in over four years, but I don't remember a time where he went in there and well, you know what? There, it, there may we be. I, I do have video footage from, from those earlier uh tours uh, that he gave. Uh, and that's when he was on the other side of the street. I can't remember him saying that. Well, I, he may have said that may be the office. We may make that into the office. Um, but I would have to go back and look. Um, it's just, he hasn't been in there. It's been over four years now. So I don't know what's going on over there uh, whatsoever. I do know that when he said a sexy office, he wasn't talking about on the other side of the school. Uh, he was talking about, uh, the small, uh, smaller building and potentially the gym too because there was times he said he was going to set up a small office space in in the gym never did that thing all right thank you so much uh as saggy about for the super chat tanya says umar is opposite oppositional uh defiant yeah um i i think there there's a uh, let, me, let me read the definition there there's a lot of um quote-unquote disorders that that you can pick out with umar uh, even when he repeats things over and over again, there's a term for it. I can't remember what's, but people have talked about that. Um, the habit, habitual lying, that's another one. The, the the fantasy where he just be going out there, just throwing anything out there. Uh, that's a disorder. It, it's so difficult to do, too, to be able to just spin stuff and just, we're going to, yeah, family, we're going to have a observatory. We're going to build an observatory on the roof of FDMG. He's actually said these types of things. And they're going to have the, we're going to have a, a, a the microscope. You'll be able to look, through, not even a microscope, the, whatever it's called. We're going to be able to look at the surface of planets. There's no technology out there today that allows you to look at surfaces or the surface of other planets. It doesn't exist. You can see the moon, but you can't see the surface of the moon because that's where a person would stand. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> He's out there, but the surface of planets, no. He's, he's so far out there that there's something associated with it. Oppositional defined disorder, ODD is a type of behavior disorder. It is most mostly diagnosed in ch uh, childhood. Children with ODD are uncooperative, defiant, and hostile towards peers, parents, teachers, and any authority figures. So that's Umar. They are more troubling to others than they are to themselves. Listen, you, that's Umar. Even the idea of having an independent school, that's just this oppositional defiant uh, disorder because he feels as if he can't have the, can't have the, the state or the government, which is an authority figure, can't be in the business. He is he's going to do whatever he wants to. So like a, like a child, but he's also in a state of aggressive development. Okay? Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, he always has a deficit, uh, deficit mindset. Yeah, you're talking about Umar. Yeah, he does. Uh, the way that he looks at in particular, the way he looks at black people. He, he always frames back black people in a negative light. Uh, I, I've said it before, 95 percent, at least 95 percent of what Umar says about black people is negative, at least 95 percent. I'll be so bold to say 98 percent. Yeah, All of the different people that he's talked about, it's always negative. All of the different athletes, negative. All the different actors, negative. All the different black women, negative. All the different black men, negative. Children, black children, negative. Y'all lazy calling children lazy you don't have a, a learned disability you have you have a, a, a what did he say uh, you have a lazy uh, disability you lazy that's why you uh, he's supposed to be a school psychologist yeah deficit mindset is poverty conscious that's what it is that's what it is thank you for soup chat uh light seeker says the cure for umar gnosis is a job yeah but he, he listen he's afraid of a job see when you have a job you, you're going to be held accountable and you got to show up and you got to you got to prove you got to prove that you're worthy of that job and you got to work and you got to produce something. Umar doesn't do any of that, including with this fake school up to the school scam in Wilmington, Delaware. No accountability, no work. He's not a worker. He's not a doer. He's a talker. OK, no accountability either. There's no one there to hold him accountable. He's just running a scam now for 13 years. Here's the receipt. And then we're going to get back to the video. I just had to make sure we get to these super chats. This was from January 6, 2010. 
This will be in three in three days, ladies and gentlemen. It will be 14 years since he posted this. He said promises in 2010 to begin laying the groundwork for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Pan African School for Black Boys, specializing in learning disabilities and disruptive behavior disorders. This will be a private school, and yes, you will pay in order for your son to attend. Grand opening September 11, 2013. This school is over a decade late already. And he's not being held accountable. But see, if he had a job, if you see, that's why he, he ain't trying to get no job. He's allergic to work. Thank you, uh, Lysik, for Super Chat. How's it going, Dion says, what's up, Lennon? He's talked just as much junk about black women as he has about snow bunnies. Hmm. Well, you know what, Dion? He's talking more. Uh, more. See, the, the snow bunny thing is more uh, more recent. It's more recent. Um, if you go back to Earth, he, he wasn't talking snow bunny stuff. He may say something about, yeah, we need to commit to our black women, blah, blah, but that don't mean nothing because he's not committed to a black woman. He just uses black women as a financial resource and as a sexual resource. That's it. Run through you all. See? But what I do know is that he's been talking uh, poorly about black women and setting up these negative scenarios about black women, you know, about how they don't take care of their kids and y'all this and y'all that. He's been doing that from the jump. So I'm not sure. I, I would say that overall, he's spoken um, a, a bad about uh, black uh, women more so than he has about snow bunnies. It's just that more recently, he mainly he's been on this thing to talk about snow bunny. But if you really think about this, now it comes to mind, Dion. The snow bunny thing is not so much about uh, so much about white women. It's 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 a more it's more about chastising and demeaning black men. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So even though he's he's making these negative comments about these white women, it's really uh, uh, the gateway to be able to chastise black women, uh, black men and to attack black men. Meanwhile, he's not even committed to a black woman and he's just using black women as a sexual resource. There's no commitment there whatsoever with the bumpity bump. OK, now, more recently, he's mainly focused on the snow bunny stuff because it's it's, uh, it's gotten a lot of views. Going back to that breakfast club, because that's when he, he first started talking. He said, I, I call it the snow bunny crisis. But if you go back to even uh, earlier, Umar, I will say uh, the second phase, the late second phase of Umar. You, you'll see that he spoke very poorly about black women, and, he, and then he still continues to do it to this day, to this day. All right, thanks, Dion, and I hope everything's going well with you. Uh, a happy New Year, all right? Okay, let's get back to the to the uh, video, everybody. I, I kind of got a little uh, blowed off, but it is what it is. I ain't playing today. Here we go. Not keep honest track of your child's suspensions. They don't. Yeah, if y'all, if we got 990 people in the building, if you guys don't mind, uh, those of y'all who have not, if you can hit the like button, it's just a quick click. It helps with the algorithm. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Thanks to the Miles too, for handling the business. All the cookware chat undefeated. Thanks to all the, the super chats as well. I appreciate y'all. Here we go. Especially if your child has an IEP. Especially if your child has an IEP. Especially if your child has an IEP. You know why? Because in the United States of America, you can only suspend a special ed child for 10 days total in the United States of America. You can only suspend a special ed child for 10 days. In the United States of America, you can only suspend a special ed child for 10 days before the IEP team has to conduct a, conduct a manifestation determination and approve subsequent days of removal. So since the special ed kids only get 10 days, since the special ed kids, the school only has 10 days that they can use to suspend a special ed child. I have a video where he was saying the same thing. And I think it was back in 2000. Uh, what was that? Two, I want to say 2010 or 11. But he was dressed in suits and ties back then. You know they're going to go over because your child doesn't know how to act. You know they're going to go over the 10 days. So you need to be keeping track of the suspensions. Every time you get a suspension notice, put it in a notebook. You should have a notebook for every child. The era of the disorganized black parent died yesterday. See, here we go. Talking to, uh, salty about you black parents. But look what he's saying. A notebook. This is he, this video is from October of 2023. And he's talking about a notebook.
Well, he's talking about a paper notebook. And that's what you're going to write down to keep track. What what year is he in? I mean, technology, he, he is when it comes to technology, he, some of that commented too, and it, it's, it's so true because I was talking about how they were walking through the room, uh, the, the buildings, these trap vandals in the yesterday video. And uh, they went into, and I said, it looks like that that's the server room because there, there was a, uh, the, the Ethernet cables fall all out the wall and all this stuff. Um, and Umar was talking about, yeah, we're gonna, maybe we can turn this into a music studio. Well, that's where the backbone infrastructure needs to be for your intranet, Umar. <laughs> but someone that commented said, yeah, that is the server room. And they was breaking down how, listen, the, what, Umar has no idea uh, what he's doing. And when it comes to technology, the fact that he doesn't recognize the significance of that room proves it time. It's already been proved, but it's been proven time and time again. He doesn't know the significance of a server room. He does, it doesn't even register that that's what that is. He said, yeah, we should, we can put, turn this into a music studio. No, 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 that, anyway. He talking about organization skills. He don't even know what a server room is. And he up here talk about a notebook, a paper notebook. That that's, anyway, here we go. The era of the disorganized black parent died yesterday. The era of the disorganized <laughs> black parent. Who am I talking to. about? Yeah, make sure you get the home and pigeon. You contact the principal. Get that home and pigeon. Get on the roof. Get on the roof, family. Go get on the roof with Mike Tyson, family. We going. Yeah, he he even told it. He I, I, he said it. he said to the children, the kids, when you put in your application to uh, for for college and you write your application letter, he says make sure you have a typewriter. I said, man, and this ain't too long ago. It's not like he said, even still, even if he said it in 2000, my goodness. Today, today is the birth of the organized black parent. This day forward, we are now organized black parents. We are no longer sloppy. We are no longer disorganized. See, he's calling y'all sloppy. You say if we're no longer, he's the answer. He's a solution because y'all sloppy. Meanwhile, he don't take care of his own kids and he has no organized. Who, he, Umar talking about somebody sloppy? Hold on. This guy, he got, he got, Umar got some nerve. Umar up here talking about how you black parents are sloppy. He's even, I even heard him say that y'all lazy too, but he said y'all sloppy. Hold on one second. Oh, that's not coming up for some reason. I'm going to come back to it almost there. There you go. He said, y'all sloppy. Strong alpha male. Send those resumes in. FDMG resumes at gmail.com. FDMG resumes at gmail.com f d m g resumes at gmail.com is what we're looking for my, my thing is is is, is y'all need to what, what happened i'm in the process of relocating at gmail.com f d m g resumes you black parents you're sloppy see here at gmail.com f d m g resumes at g look at this he ain't got no business talking about someone being sloppy gmail look I, I don't even see how a person can live. I don't. I don't get it. I. I. I just can't live that way. Like I, I, my mind don't work that way. They just don't. Everything has to have a place, and if it's out of place, I'll go over there and I'll move it. I'll put it, even if it's just like you know this cup. Okay, this shouldn't be right. Let me go put it right here because I already drank that one. I'm gonna set that over there. The one I'm gonna drink that's right here. See if if he can't. He, yeah, he is Bobby. He's, he's a hoarder. But if he can't keep this little room right here, little apartment room clean, how how he gonna manage a, a a functional school? He doesn't he doesn't have the capacity to do it. I know, I, I, and, and see, I, it's okay. I can say this because I'm not gonna say the lady's name, but 
this one young lady earlier on, this was years ago, they, they were talking about how they had some dealings with Umar and they actually went over to his place. And she says that, that uh, it was so filthy, you know, uh, uh, plates in the sink uh, with uh, uh, rotting food, you know, trash all over the place. Uh, this may have been before he flipped this phone too. Now that I think about it, I would have to go back. I, I could be wrong on that because it was so many, it was so many years ago. So, and uh, she had de dealings with this guy. Um, the idea that he's going to open up a school for even the idea that he should, e people should even think that he, he should be around children. Uh, that That's crazy. Dot com is what we're looking for. My, my thing is, 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 is y'all need to, what, what happened? See, he used to live stream in these little corners and you had a little setup like this. A lot of those earlier Umar videos, was, really that's third phase Umar, early third phase Umar. That's what he would do is set these things up. Living in filth. I'm in the process of relocating. And then he starts lying. He never relocated. They got evicted from this residence. Now he's standing in Mama closet, literally. Anyway, he has no business uh, telling uh, black people that they're um, disorganized or that they're sloppy. That's why he's never he never gets anything done. He never does. Uh, wait, how does he explain a child petitioning a college or university with an FMG diploma? They won't be able to go to college. It's that simple. And for you, Umar Johnson followers, what uh, Sigmund is, is referring to here is the fact. And it is a fact because Umar admitted it. He admitted that these schools, this school, this school, will not, his school, FMG, will not be accredited. So that means when the first graduating class uh, uh, appears and he said, he want, I think he said he want to start with the fourth grade. So it would have to be eight years out from when the school opens. Let's say if it opens in uh, 2024. OK, eight years later. Uh, we're talking 2032 when that first graduating class of, of 80, uh, uh, excuse me, of 20, uh, uh, 32, when they graduate, they're going to get Umar, I guess, is going to give them a piece of paper that he calls a diploma. But because the school is not accredited, the diploma won't mean anything in the real world, including going to college. If the job application says you have to have a high school diploma or a GED, they won't be able to. And, and I mean, they, I guess you can apply. But if they do the research and they look up, oh, OK, you got a, you got a, a diploma from FDMG. OK, let's go ahead and look that up. Uh, it, it won't be accredited. So it won't mean anything. So the, these children, when they graduate uh, in, in 2032, I think that's what I said. Uh, basically, they would have to go to get their GED. You, Mark Johnson Falls, how do you explain that? It don't matter because he's never going to open a school. And now he's up here talking about from yesterday's live stream. He talked about with Maria, how they're going to turn it into a music studio, the main office. That's what he said. Go watch the archive. Uh, thanks for the super chat, uh, Sigmund. Uh, I appreciate it. Lewis X says he's going to send his parent lectures by VH <laughs> VHS tapes, his audio lectures by cassette and send your evaluation on his word processor. <laughs> Y'all remember word processors? They're like electronic typewriters, right? Yeah, that, that, I, I, yeah, I remember those. Yeah, he, he's so uh, uh, behind when it comes to technology. It's it's so ridiculous. And he, he said things like this school is state of the art when he was on Lord Jamar. It's it's not state of the art, and he shouldn't even be talking about state of the art because he's he's talking up. He said the other day he said that he had someone coming up there, and I kid you not, he gonna have he's have someone uh, coming up to look at the the school's data system. So in my mind, because I have an IT degree, in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, is he talking about a data server? Is he talking about his intranet? Uh, is he talking about uh, the, the uh, laptops? Is he talking about tablets? Is he talking about Chromebooks that the kids are going to be using in the storage of that data? What is he talking about ex exactly? Is he going to have cloud backup? Is he talking about the server room? This is what my, in my mind, that's what I'm thinking of. But come to find out. Umar is talking about the intercom system. That's why he's talking about speakers and stuff. We got to get these speakers. That's what he's talking about. He's so antiquated. He's, he's, he's just, he's lost in time. He's like a dinosaur when it comes to technology.
Thanks, Louis. Uh, Sigmund also says, uh, coming from an unaccredited institution. Yeah, that's exactly the institution would be unaccredited. And Umar actually, he actually admitted that. Uh, and see, even if he wanted to get it accredited, it's not going to happen because he would have to go through the state in order to do that. And he don't want to deal with the state. But part of the reason why he don't want to deal with the state is because he don't want to be held accountable. And there's so much crazy madness that has gone on up there. It's obvious they would he wouldn't get accredited even if he applied. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Thank you for super chat. Uh, Lewis Stuck, you are a funny guy. Yeah, Umar is is on uh, pre analog and a digital. <laughs> he said pre he's the pre analog. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with analog. Y'all remember back in the day the little tape decks and the tapes, and even before that they were called eight tracks. A lot of y'all don't have no idea what I'm talking about. Then you have the vinyl records. Okay, lots of, more people know about those because they they had a resurgence. Yeah, that's that's that ain't nothing wrong with that. That's good old thing. That's good old days. You couldn't skip to a song. You would have to. Four, you hit the forward button and wait, <laughs> or you have to take the needle off the thing and go over to another groove. Okay, okay, let's get back to it. Thanks for all super chats, everybody. I appreciate it. Here we go. I'm no longer uninformed. Go this is the beginning. Yep, this is the birth of the organized black parent. So get. By the way, this is a very good point, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember floppy disk. I actually have a floppy disk uh, that connects via USB. Just because <laughs> I don't use it, I just have it just to, for nostalgia's sake, you know. I, you know, <laughs> but uh, Black Anonymous says, uh, Who would pay 500 per month per child for them to get a diploma that means absolutely nothing? See, on top of all of this foolishness, Umar expects these parents to pay $500 a month, a month. We even did the math, like, uh, I can't remember what the figure was, but how many, uh, the operating budget for the Moyer Academy, I believe it was $6 million, that was uh, over a decade ago, uh, and uh, $6 million, uh, almost a decade ago, uh, $6 million, for, and he's only dealing with half of that, half of, of the buildings, but with inflation, how much would his operating budget be? Well, it'd have to be at probably about $4 million a year, at least, at least. How many children, because he's doing this all off of donations, and I guess he thinks that tuition is going to pay for all this stuff. How, how many students is he going to have to have to cover it? More than what uh, the, that, that half a side of the street is going to be able to have in there, because you can't have the, the fire codes. You can't have, you only have a certain amount of uh, kids or people in a building. He, even financially, it doesn't make any sense, but he don't care about that. He's just trying to get money and keep it going indefinitely so he can keep collecting donations. That's all it is. Uh, analog usually ha uh, has the warmest sound. You're right about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's something that I appreciate about analog. Cause I used to have uh, a ja old jazz records, like old stuff that I used to listen to on a uh, uh, analog. Uh, what they, what they call uh, what do we used to call those uh, record players? Yeah, yeah, record players. And I bought one for my son. I, I don't know why I spent it's like 250 bucks off of Amazon, <laughs> and I bought him a whole bunch. He didn't even listen to. It. He, uh, but I ended up selling it because we uh, we had no use to it, just collecting dust. But I used to listen to records on there too, and it's true. It that, that analog it has a very warm sound. It's very much different than digital. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to it, everybody. Here we go. On your job, if you're not going to raise them, stop having them. If you're not going to raise them, stop. This is just projecting because Umar has baby mamas and he don't raise his kids. I'll leave it at that. Let's keep going having them if you're not going to protect them stop having them See, he don't protect them either he's put out his baby mom one of the baby mama's uh place of business the grandmama and then he gave the the baby girls a school location see see how i was talking about earlier that's our responsibility as men whether you want to deal you know just specifically with your wife or uh, and your children or your girlfriend and your children or whatever or you want to extend that to other uh, uh, women and, and children, meaning strictly as someone who's there to protect. If I see a woman who, you know, may be in a dangerous situation, I'm not just going to turn a blind eye to it. I don't care who it is. If I see a child is in a dangerous situation, I'm not going to turn a blind eye to it. That's not what men do. But Umar, on the other hand, he's actually endangered uh, his uh, one of his baby mamas, baby mama, grandma, and one of his daughters because he told his fathers to go up there and confront them. You don't know who's listening and what they may do if they go up there. You guys see what I'm saying? So Umar, he's just projecting right here. You know, he don't take care of his kids. He's a rolling stone and still out here crushing uh, 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 went these black women out there, crushing their cookies with the bumpity bump. If you're not going to take their education seriously, start having them. 
Stop having them. Because every time you birth a black child into this world that you are not taken serious, you just gave birth to another slave for the plantation. That's all you did. Who's he talking to, by the way, Cookie Quest Chat? Who's he talking about? He's, he's saying you, but who is he talking about? He ain't talking about black men. Because for black men, it's just you go and do what you want to do. You just go on here and impregnate these women and just go on about your business because that's what it means to be a black man. So it's a bunch of bull jai. That's why a lot of y'all been sassy with me late, lately. Just want to be as sassy as you want to be. He's projecting. See, he's talking about himself, but he's projecting onto black women. But part of the reason why he's projecting this onto black women is because he has a disdain for black women. He sees you all in a very lowly way, especially when it comes to how you, quote unquote, raise your black children. And he's the solution. Umar's the solution to this because he don't save your black boy. I've heard him say things like that. I, I even have, I can pull it up right now where he was talking about. Uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to pull it up right now. I don't even have to go into my archive. I'll pull it up online. No, I'll pull it up. No, let me see. Hold on one second. Because y'all, y'all, so all y'all, you, you've seen this before. Most of y'all, you've seen this before because uh, it was in the Shockermentary Part One um, War on Black Boys. Here we go, right here. Play this for y'all because this will give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You black women, you guys are always the problem. Right, I'm gonna need to skip through though uh, to get to the part, but it ain't gonna take but a second. Hold on, one second. Um. My next question, overall IQ Answer, brothers and sisters. Therapist, they got an inpatient therapist, they right? How the hell does a child know that running and playing is not appropriate in here? Uh, expectations. So y'all need to be careful about that. Black folks, we never ask for stuff on paper. White culture is based on reading on the third grade level teachers. That's illegal. But when they go, you got kids at home, one hour of sustained silent reading every night in the house. Turn off scandal, turn off empire, basketball wop, turn all that foolish Negro coonery stuff off. He's talking to you black women. That's what y'all need to do. And make them take out a book. One hour. It should be longer. But I'm going to let you go with an hour. Every night. I'm going to let you go. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I don't always talk like this, too, by the way. I just do it for the show. I, normally, I talk like this. And when I talk to people, hey, how's it going, Bob? <laughs> I get up on here. Ah! <laughs> I'm just playing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> anyway, but you know, he he's talking. Well, watch this part, though. Hold on. From 7 to 8, we read in this house. Tell, turn your cell phones off. Turn the TV, radio, internet, nothing is on but your brain from seven to eight. Y'all have to do this. And make sure the book that your child reads is instructional. Now, following me, science, crushing black folk all over America. Student Douglas and Marcus Garvey Academy. Mm. You're going to teach your child agricultural and agronomical science, how to grow and to plant. Get down in the soil, take them fake fingernails off and dig your damn hands in that earth. We're going to teach you how to grow, how to feed yourself, how to test the soil for nutritional content, how to make money selling food. Okay, there, there's no nutritional content in the soil, Umar. What are you talking about? No one's eating soil for its nutritional content. I know what you're trying to say because I had a garden. Uh, to be honest, I ain't nothing but a country boy. I, I really am. OK. I, I know how to do these types of things, which I, what you're meaning to say is whether or not the soil has enough nutrients in it for the plants to actually grow. That's what you're really saying. 
as an example if you have a clay based uh, uh, uh soil not much is going to grow there except kutsu you ain't gonna get into that right now <laughs> not much is gonna grow in it anyway you don't even know what he's talking about real food not mcdonald's and then we're going to teach them financial science in the ninth grade, your child will have a business plan. In the 10th grade, they will have mastered the real estate market of Nevada. In the 11th grade, they will already have a stock portfolio. And at 15, 16 years old, they're training, trading stocks and investments as a teenager. In other words, I'm going to show them that you can get rich without a college degree. While black people still sending their kids to college like it's an automatic thing you're supposed to do. You don't. Omar, you said you got six degrees. What are you talking about? automatically send a black kid to college the only thing you guaranteed to get from college is debt to the bank student loans not necessarily umar it happens but if that is the case then you pay your debt student loans crushing black folk all over america student loans and the price of college keep on going up it was on the front cover u.s news and world report last He's so negative. Hold on, let me get to this part. Last month, the price of college is it worth it? This is white folks now. He got all the degrees and they got all the damn money. Degrees in Beethoven and stuff. Go fix cars in the hood right now. Y'all follow me? <laughs> Smoke some weed, get somebody pregnant, and get kicked out for academic probation. College, who ain't got no discipline? If your son barely went to school in high school, if he barely did his homework in high school, if he barely passed in high school, what the hell you think gonna happen when he get to UCLA? Flunk the hell out the first semester. Smoke some weed, get somebody pregnant, and get kicked out for academic probation. Told y'all. His views of black people, especially when it comes to in the academics, it's so lowly. But I'm gonna tell y'all something Umar thinks in terms of elitism. When it comes to black people, he perceives himself to be at the top and all of us were lowly, these lowly. And he's here to save us because he has six degrees and he's big papa. Meanwhile, he's living in mom's closet. Black males have the worst retention rate. I'm just keeping it real. Infantry. You going into the army and you ain't got no college degree or trade under your belt. Infantry. The worst thing, white folks, ROTC program. The schools in Reno. And guess what the Philadelphia public schools are doing with all those African children? Sticking them in special ed because they don't want to hire an Esau teacher. They'll still get a regular high school. So that leaves what? The nice disability. The curriculum, we're going to give them brothers and sisters. Civil War, 1865. It, but we bought into the illusion of... They might have been underfunded. They might have been... My great grandfather, Cuban, I know all about them, too. Don't want to be black. <laughs> Pharmaceuticals from the drugstore. Here we go. Right them. here. I want our children to be masters of healing the body without no pharmaceuticals from the drugstore. <laughs> I want that little boy back there. If mommy not feeling well, he can go out to the yard, get some herbs, boil it, put a little honey in it, little cayenne pepper and knock mommy flu right on out. I want them to be able to heal diabetes. Ten years old and they know how to heal diabetes. That's what I want in my school. Type one or type two? What are you talking about? Anyway. That's what we work it towards. So far, we raised $250,000. I'm gracious, but I'm not content. Because I know you Notice he says, I'm gracious. He doesn't say, I'm grateful. He can't even speak, speak those kind of words. He's telling the truth right here. He says, I'm gracious because I'm big papa, but I'm not content. You never content. You want some more and some more and some more. I got a lot more to give me than some $250,000. When Darren Wilson killed Michael Brown, white folks gave him $300,000 in three weeks for his defense. And Dr. Umar Johnson is trying to build a state-of-the-art school for black boys that y'all all know I need. And after six months, I only got $250,000. Six months, $250,000. I told y'all, he, he got to be close to $3 million by now. This has been going on for 13 years. And he started in 2014 for this uh, St. Paul school scam. So if you want to start there, 2014, now it's 2024, it's a decade. He said in six months, he got how much? Because I know y'all got a lot more to give me than some $250,000. $250,000 in six months, months. And it's been going on for 10 years, specifically for this St. Paul's 
school scam. And yeah, yeah, he said only. He, he's he's greedy and un, he's ungrateful. Yeah, I need is hit my school. I need I need my school. Mommy, oh, if you know I need food right on out. I want them to be able to heal diabetes. 10 years old, and they know how to heal diabetes. That's what I want in my school. My That's school. what we work it towards. So far, hey, we don't. raised $250,000. I'm gracious, but I'm not content. Because I know y'all got a lot more to give me than some $250,000. Oh, when Darren Wilson killed Michael Brown, white folks gave him $300,000 in three weeks for his defense. <laughs> and Dr. Umar Johnson. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. <laughs> uh, I don't know. For me, I, it reminded me of a prison jumpsuit for some reason. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was going to go home to cook. Thank you for suit. That was all thinking. It was like a prison jumpsuit. You got that big old medallion on. Yeah, big pop up. <laughs> Dominique says, Umar bet no uh, parent got their child on uh, Britannica. Uh, <laughs> Umar bet no parent got their child on Britannica set for Christmas. He said this. Did he really? Did he really say that? <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. Actually, when I think about it, he said that last week. Don't get them a set of Britannica. Okay. He said, I need that. I need that Britannica money for Christmas, family. I need that Britannica money. Thanks, Dominique. Sigma says, uh, no, Yasmin 3000. That is Jermaine Shoemake with his real hair. <laughs> no, that's when he was playing Frederick Douglass. I mean, I have the video. <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of the weirdest, weirdest things that, that I, I've seen. Because he's just standing there looking so goofy and lost. And now that you mentioned it, let me put this in my notes. This ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I'm just putting it in my notes. Okay. So don't y'all. Uh, that's when he was he was playing <laughs> Frederick Douglass. <laughs> How many of y'all have seen that? Hit the one. It's one of the most weirdest. And he's just standing there looking so goofy. Uh, standing on stage with that wig on. They had promo uh, things and everything. It was just, well, he's, he ain't even related to Freddie Douglas. Okay, I think I got to all the Super Chats so far. Thank y'all so much uh, for it. Yeah, mo some of y'all have seen it. No, 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 I because I, we, we we were supposed to be so focused today. It was supposed to be a quick show. I got to get some sleep too, too tonight, y'all. I'm still not 100%, but I told Beep I made a commitment, and I'm, I'm here because uh, I made a commitment to y'all, but I'm still 100%. What I really need the most is to get some sleep. You want to see it? <laughs> Bitch, you ain't seen it. Okay, hold on. I'm not going to play it, but let me see if, if I actually, uh, if I have it right here uh, in my uh, immediate notes. Give me one second. I'm, I'll probably archive it as wig. <laughs> and there's a couple of uh, uh, pictures of him in different wigs too, by the way. Okay, it's not coming up right there. All right, let me see something. Uh, Douglas. I know I have it in my uh, my Word document though, so let me let me pull that up real quick too. Hold on one second. I got them old videos of Umar at Frederick Douglass' grave. It's, it's so sad. It's just so sad. Oh, I don't have it in here either. Yeah, I would actually have. To, oh no, here, um, is this? No, these are the these are the pictures only. Um, let me see, because it's still populating. But I, I have the screenshots right here, but I took the screenshots from the actual video. But I would have to find the actual video first. Let me do this. Let me open this file location and see if the video is embedded in there. Yeah, no, these are just, the, these are just JPEG images. But I do have... What folder is this in? 
Yeah, I'm sorry, everyone. Um, it's only Vince, Vince want to see it, but I, I don't, I don't, it's going to take me a minute to find it because I got to find the actual folder where I think I know what this is. Let me see. I ain't going to say what, what folder it is because then y'all, um, let me click on chapters and then there should be a folder in here for Frederick Douglass. You know, H -O okay. Pause. Um, no. Okay. Cause it's going to take me a minute. I don't want to hold it, hold everybody up. Okay. So let me, let's go back to planning this. And, and if I'm able to find it, I'll, uh, I'll pull it up. Okay. And if I can't find it while we're live streaming, then I'll, I'll make sure to find it between now and our next live stream. I don't know when the next live stream is going to be, but, um, I'll, I'll have it for y'all. Okay. Okay. Let's get back to it. So it's trying to build a state of the art school for black boys that y'all all know I need. And after six months, I only got $250,000. Trifling ass black people. Damn. I'm gonna call it like I say it. And I don't care if you get offended. We can handle that outside. Mm-hmm. We no trifling. Problem. I should have been had that $2 million. I should have had that $2 million 30 days after I started the fundraiser on May the 20th. It don't make no sense. But y'all sure called me up when the school's messing with your son. Did you make a donation to my school? Oh, um, not yet. Bye. Click. Click. That's the new Umar. You want some help with your son? Did I get a donation? No, nah, I want to hear that. Mail the donation, then you call me back, and then I'll help you with your son. But you're not going to use me to fight white folks when your son shouldn't even have to put up with them in the first place. We're trying to buy the St. Paul's College in Lawrenceville, Virginia. Still available. I was in communication with the president about three days ago. He told me the school's still an option. That's lying. But now they're trying to sell it's the getting... school into pieces. Now they're trying to sell, sell the student center. Okay, I, I, we're almost there. I just want to get to this point, and then we'll get back to the video, y'all. Hold on a second. They st if they sell that student center, I don't even want the rest of the school no more because the student center the best thing on the campus. Day before yesterday, I was in Port Gibson, Mississippi. The NAACP invited me down there because they have a school for sale. Chamberlain Hunt White Military Academy. Nice school, too. It's not as big as St. Paul's, but it'll work. So I'm just hoping y'all help me raise this $2 million before somebody buy them schools. That's what I'm hoping. See how he says $2 million? See, he kept bumping the figure up because initially he said $1 million. And I actually have the receipt for that, but let's keep going. Uh, and then he put bumped it up to $4 million. Okay. So if you need the information to mail in a check or donation, if you brought a check or money order, make it payable to FDMG Academy. Make sure your name, address, and phone number is on your donation. I really don't want cash. I prefer to have a paper trail with your donation. But if you got to make it cash, you need to put it in a piece of paper, wrap it up. Do not give me raw cash. Put it in a piece of paper with your name, your phone number, your email address on it. <laughs> Why? Said raw because cash. when we finally... He said what, raw cash. Open up that school. Everybody who helped me, whether they gave me a dollar or a million dollars, I want to make sure they get properly honored. We're going to have an honorary ceremony for the people who cared enough to help me Never build happened. that school. <laughs> I need everybody in here to come up with a dollar amount that you can afford to mail every month and you mail it. I don't care if it's ten dollars. See, this was the precursor. This is him formulating the the loyal donors club way in advance of it actually starting. This guy It's twenty dollars, fifty dollars. You yeah, come up with what you can cash. afford and you send me that. <laughs> I'm getting sick and tired. You don't want it baked, sauteed, fried to the side. You don't want that. He need that raw cash, family. Don't put no cheese on it, no bacon bits, family. Don't put no butter bacon bits on the side. I need that raw cash. <laughs> don't set it in the sun so it'll get like a beef or jerky. I don't want that. I want it raw. <laughs> crazy. Yes, and when I go all over to Japan to get in the bubble bath, I need that sushi cash. <laughs> No, no, money. I don't want no medium rare cash. I don't want it fried. I don't want my sauteed on the side. I need that raw cash. <laughs> okay, I need it baked. I don't want no baked cash. I don't want none of that. Don't toast it either. Don't put it in a toaster. Don't put it in the broiler. Don't put it in the oven. I need it raw. 
<laughs> Who are crazy? Hey, Bobby. Who are you? Know he crazy? <laughs> Boy, he's something else. No, no, Yolanda. I don't want it fried. I don't. I don't deal with the fried. It's too. It's too much. Oil. It's too much oil. I'll need it raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't simmer my cash. Last call. I said, don't. <laughs> yeah, I said three times. Don't simmer my cash. Don't simmer my cash. Last call. That's the last time I'm going to tell you. I need this raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want the chat. <laughs> now, the, I'm not, want, I don't want no char boil. That's not what I said. <laughs> he said, he said, just run him. Run me my <laughs> he, he said, run me my raw cash. <laughs> that's, that's one of the funniest Umar lines of all time. He said, I need it raw. I said, oh no. <laughs> Don't put my cash in no crock pot. <laughs> Don't put it in a deep fry or none of that. But <laughs> you don't put it in that thing. I don't. Okay, let's get back to it. He wants that raw cash, man. I, I don't blame him, no. <laughs> don't make me knock you out now, <laughs> J. John. I knock you out. I don't want that George Foreman real cash. I don't. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm tripping now. I'm tripping. I know. I'm. I'm tripping now. Let me stop, okay? <laughs> he said he's going to go to the Japan and get the bubble baths. He want that sushi cash. <laughs> All wrong. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get let's get back to it. <laughs> I don't want no griddle cash back to the basics. I don't do the griddle. <laughs> if it ain't raw, <laughs> you know who I be rhyming? If it ain't raw, that is all. I'm Okay, let's get back to it now, people. Uh, let me pull up this. Um, I'm such a weirdo. <laughs> I'll be goofing off. Now. Okay, let's get back to it. Now, uh, here we go. Um, I want to show you this picture of Umar in this wig, but it is something to behold. Uh, we, we get too far. We got already got blown off. Let, let's finish this real quick. We get back to the original video. Again, Texas on my cell phone for black folk talking about I've donated. I want to make sure they get properly honored. We're going to have an honorary ceremony for the people who cared enough to help me build that school. I need everybody in here to come up with a dollar amount that you can afford to mail every month and you mail it. I don't care if it's ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars. You come up with what you can afford and you send me that. I'm getting sick and tired of getting Texas on my cell phone for black folk talking about Texas. I've donated like they done. <laughs> you gave me twenty five damn dollars and you think you free now. Mm. We got to raise $2 million. Your ass ain't done. I better get some more and some more and some more and some more until we hit the goal, brothers and sisters. That's the way we're going to have to do this. Mm. We also want to teach our children African spirituality. African spirituality. It's not a religious school. We're not into that. I don't want the kids coming back home to you because you're part of the problem. You got Willie Lynch all in your system. White Jesus on the wall. Teaching your kids to be multicultural, daughter looking like Beyonce, a head full of blind ass weed. What the hell I want her coming back home to you for? She stayed with me and the boys stay with me. And see, he's drinking water, but he, he catches himself because he's like, what? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, 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 who said that in here? You're absolutely right about this. Uh, let me let me find it because it well actually it already updated. Um, someone said something to the effect of it's it's a, a like a cult personality. Yeah, cult mentality. That's what it is. That the, the day you did deserve. You're absolutely right. That's exactly what this is. Um, but you see what he says, and he he takes a sip of water and while he's sipping in his mind. I think he realizes that what he said sounded really really suspect, if you will, and then he tries to correct it by saying this in the dorms. If any of you want to work at the school, send me your resume. We've already received over 600, but that's not enough. All right, we're going to leave it right there. But the point that I was getting at is how he he always makes the black parent 
seem as if they're less than and they're not good parents, but he specifically says that mainly about black women, single mothers. And that's why when he says something like, what, what, you know, what the hell do I want them coming back to home to you for with the blonde weed, you know, all that kind of stuff? See, how he sees black women is very, it's very, very uh, a negative. He just has a very negative disposition towards black women. I mean, it's it's uh, misogynistic in point of fact. OK, and this is leading up to the video of uh, the section in this video that we've been covering uh, right here. Here we go. Hey, this morning, I want to oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Not this one. Not you that either one. birth in a revolutionary or you birth in a slave. That's it. That's it. There's no in between. You either given birth to a revolutionary or you given birth to a slave. That's it. Every black parent, every black person in this world. Don't do that. Male Nick. or female, Don't do that. rich or poor, <laughs> educated or uneducated is either. Let's not do that. OK. Uh, orange is the new black. OK. All right. That's what he was in his orange jumper. No, I'm just playing. I shouldn't do that. Either. Thanks, Vegas. I think Dominique. Tata says, just lie and say yes when he asks if you donated. Then I'll <laughs> there, I'll fix it. I'll know. Just say, did you donate? Yeah, I did. Okay. Everybody, okay. Umar's like, okay, that's fine. We're good. We're good. Like, everything is about donations with this guy. That's like that's why when he was on, you remember, Tata, when he was on uh, Lord Jamar, he actually said it. He says, I don't care about people. I care about the donors. That was like, wow, he's really telling the truth right here. You see? So uh, in Umar's mind, he's he's cool with you if you donate. At least for a while, but at a certain point, he just he dismisses people and he moves on to new people to give him money. And he's been doing this for it, it, it's over a decade now. You know, it's um even these days, it's hard for me to come to grips with the fact that the St. Paul school scam itself has been going on for nine years and six months, seven months. Yeah. Nine, nine, it's about to be 10 years. It'd be uh, 10 years in April of 2024. Can you believe that? The St. Paul school scam started back then. And he does the video where he's walking up there and had them jeans on. And, and, and here we are almost a decade later. Wow. Thanks, Tata, for the Super Chat. I appreciate it. Uh, Umar yelling and being angry at black people. He he's really uh, just shook. He knows he might run out of money. Yeah, he's always um, and I, I think I spoke to this in yesterday's live stream. He's always in a state of desperation because if you all think about it, if, if if Umar doesn't have any other source of income and he doesn't, okay, it's, it's he's he's a dependent. Everyone who sends him money, he's a dependent. He depends on you so that he can live life. Okay, but that has to be a state of desperation because every single day you don't know. If money's going to come in, you don't know when it's going to come in. You don't know uh, how much is going to come in. That's a very difficult way to live. I mean, especially if you've been doing it for over a decade now. And what I mean by that is he don't know how many people are going to donate today. He doesn't know how much money they're going to donate either. They may donate through PayPal. They may donate to Cash App. They may he likes to Cash App because it's direct. And they may send money to the PO box. But that, but that's a and again he needs this to, just to survive the day. That's got to be a rough place to be in life. So he's always in a state of desperation. And I would propose that one of the reasons why he's angry at black people, because there are days where in the month there's just not enough money. And he feels entitled to the money. And if people aren't sending it, who does he blame? He blames black people. Just like the school not being done. Who does he blame? He blames black people. Just like the children, all these bad black children, as he says, who does he blame? Black people, mainly black women. See? But it's a it has to be a horrible place to live, uh, a horrible place to be in life, especially over the last decade where you're so dependent on other people. You don't know how much money is going to come in on any given day, when it's going to come in, through what means it's going to come in. And you're just trying to get through the day. You're just trying to survive. See, but that's like I said before, Umar needs to change his life. He needs to get things turned around and he, he has to stop with this scamming and skeezing. The thing is that a person can say, well, that's easy, though. He can just sit back and ask for money over and over again. It's easy to do that. And it's it's money. It's basically free money. But that's not an easy lifestyle to live, especially for someone who's almost 50 years old. And he's been doing this now uh, for over 13 years. It's, it's been over 14 years. Okay. So, yeah, he knows he might run out of money at any given time. And there are times I'm sure where he, he's, he doesn't have any money. So he, that's when he gets on live and he starts saying, get on your cash app, get on your PayPal. And there's a state of desperation. He does it all the time. 
See, if, if he was sitting on a million dollars, he wouldn't have a need to be uh, uh, doing that. See, but he's not. He's, he's, he's done blown through most of the money that was donated him to open up a school. Now he's talking about they're going to open up a, 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 a what did he call a, a music? Uh, what did he call? I can't remember what he called it yesterday because he they were in the office. He said a, a, a music room in office. No, he, he, he called it a. I guess the sound booth and then the music engineering area. And he was going to use the IT room, uh, not the IT, well, you can call it the IT room, but the, the infrastructure room, the server room as the location for, I think he said the, the studio um, technician, the tech, that's the person that would be, you know, running the mixing board, uh, whether it's uh, analog or digital and, and, and actually doing the recording. There was going to be another room that he was going to turn into a recording booth. That's where he's at these days. And even that, I think that's just he's trying to find a way to make more money, even though the school is supposed to be for uh, for black boys. He's he trying to turn. He's trying to, uh, to open up roofless records. Roofless. As someone said yesterday, there's a roof roofless. OK, oh, let's get back to it, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Geo Scholar, for the super chat. Thank you, Dominique. And thank you, uh, Vegan Sports Bar and Tata. OK, let's get back to it. We got to get going here because we already had, I want to try to keep this under three hours to, today. Here we go. Slave or a revolutionary? Clarence Thomas is a slave. Charles Barkley is a slave. See, here we go. He's always talking bad about black people. And again, it's not a criticism. It's just, I'm going to say something negative. I'm going to call him a slave. See that? It's one thing to have legitimate criticism. It's another thing where you're just demeaning a person and calling them names. Well, this is what Umar does. He does this all the time, especially towards successful black men. Candace Owens is a slave. Jesse Lee Peterson is a slave. You're either giving birth to slaves or you're giving birth to revolutionaries. That's it. <laughs> Keep track. <laughs> Y'all ease up on the Prince of Pan PayPal. <laughs> I've never heard Pan PayPal. I've heard the Prince of Pan, a Pan Pizza. <laughs> so I've heard people say that. People be going in on this guy. He's the Prince of Pan PayPal. <laughs> the Prince of PayPal, PayPal and Raw Cash. Family, let me stop. Of the suspensions, I uh, thank you, uh, skinny boy, uh, 24 for the super chat. Here we go. Keep track of the suspensions, keep track of the suspensions. Thank you, Jalisa. Jalisa sent in a super sticker, too. Thank you so much. Okay, also, if your child is suspended and you don't get a notice, they didn't do you a favor, demand a notice. If your child is suspended and you didn't get a notice, demand a notice. Sometimes they don't give you the notice because they want you to forget about the suspension day. This is a trick that principals use. They will suspend your child and not put it on the record. They will suspend your child and not put it on the record. Sometimes they don't give you the suspension notice because the suspension notice was written up to make your child look like a demon. They don't want you to see it. Sometimes they don't give you the suspension notice because the suspension notice was written up to make your child look like a demon. They don't want you to see it. Demand the suspension notice. I did not get the suspension notice. And if you don't get a suspension notice, take your child back to school. Legally, I'm giving you the law. In the United States of America, you cannot suspend a child without a notification. They have to go home with paperwork. You have to email the parent paperwork. If your child. He's not even related to Frederick Douglass. He's not even related to the guy. His daddy even took a DNA test and a DNA test came back conclusive that they're not descendants of Frederick Douglass. They're not. They're not. And you didn't get a notice. If your child is suspended from school and you didn't get a notice, they are not suspended. Take your child back to school. Take your child back to school. And if they say he can't come in here, he's suspended, give me a notice. And if you're not going to give me a notice, I'm going down to the superintendent's office right now. 
I'm taking my child to the superintendent's office right now. I'm taking my child to the superintendent of the school district's <laughs> office right now. And you go downtown and you tell them the principal is breaking the law. He gave my child verbal notice of a suspension with no documentation, with no documentation. You cannot suspend a child without documentation. Part of the suspension process requires documentation. My child didn't get any documentation. I wasn't given any documentation. Take the child back to school. Take the child to the superintendent's office. Yeah, what's up, Ray? Yeah, uh, Happy New Year, too. Office. Never let your child stay home without a notice. You need documentation. Email, postal mail, book bag mail. You need notice. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG Here we go. school. Here he go. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. I am in Capitol Heights, Maryland. I am in Capitol Heights, Maryland. I got sleepy driving back to Philly last night from Nat Turner's 223rd birthday celebration, Earth Day celebration, solar return celebration. I got tired and I pulled off in Capitol Heights, Maryland. So I'm here in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Shout out to all my Maryland Africans. I might doozy on up to Baltimore. I might stop by my favorite black bookstore. I might stop by the Great Blacks and Wax Museum. I might pull up and watch. Yeah, someone just emailed me about, uh, and I got a, I got a lot of emails to get caught up on. So y'all just be patient with me. I've been so busy. Um, someone had said uh, Umar's uh, video of Umar's school on Twitter, and they're asking me if I've actually seen it. Yeah, I, I saw it. In fact, the person who recorded the video uh, he lives out there in in wilmington um he was in the chat room when we, when we covered that and it was a, basically an outside tour of the conditions of these trap banners up there in wilmington and it's it's we i think we did two shows on that in fact um more damning evidence evidence it just goes to show that umar is a liar because he said the renovations are complete no no not not even close enj went up there too i uh, shot the enj nation they went out those my people i mean those they they They've been with me when I was just a, a broke bum, you know, just in a bad situation and just lost. And and, and they, they've stuck with me from that time uh, to this day. They, they're just some of my favorite people on the planet. Uh, they went up there, too. Y'all remember Hit the One. And um, around that time, we covered their video and we covered the guy that went up there. And I know I don't even know I should say his name, but the Reverend Jerry Juice. Uh, we covered his video, too. And that, that's just so damaging. Y'all remember that? It hit the one. Okay, let's get back to it. Here we go. Washington, D.C. at the Sankofa Bookstore. I might pull up at Howard University, get me a Howard hoodie. I might pull up at Coppin State, get me a Coppin State t <laughs> oh <my God>, <laughs> Ubar got that weave weave on, don't he? He got the weave. He got, it's not a weave. It's a weave weave. <laughs> Why you do that? But it's but you're right. He that should be um, all he talks about, but uh, he he doesn't. Uh, again, you would think that after four years and eleven months that he would have some serious progress. But part of the reason why he, he don't have no progress is because he always running his mouth and he's over there, over here, over there doing everything except opening up the school. Everything except opening up the school. Uh, thanks, whole Southern Cook. Uh, discussing discipline, but no ceiling top. I know. And and uh, people have been posting uh, how much. I think you did. It, you posted this too. How much ceiling tiles cost? It's not like they're expensive. I mean, it's expensive if if I guess if the amount of tiles that need to go up. But if you collected millions of dollars, there should be no problem with doing that, and that should have been taken care of within the first uh, I don't know two months of acquiring these trap bandles. And here's the thing that people don't understand that those ceiling tiles are up there for a reason. It's it sound is insulation. Yeah, it's also heat insulation. Yeah. But also it helps to keep uh, uh, dust particulates from falling that are up there uh, in the roof, you know, in the roof area, the higher up from falling down onto the people who because that's a that's a hazard. It's a health hazard. That's why the asbestos and all this kind of stuff. In fact, the EPA, when in their report, I talked about this yesterday in their report, they said that they don't know. They they, they can't identify what types of toxins are actually inside the buildings at this point, because no inspections have taken place. After, you know, after a certain period of time. So they don't know if there's asbestos up there, lead paint or anything like that. They have no idea, you know, 
and uh, th those ceiling tiles are there not just for insulation and not uh, that they're not not just that. You know, the other thing is that a lot of the insulation stuff is not you're not supposed to breathe it in for extended periods of time, so especially um, fiber fiberglass. You guys know that because the fiberglass particulates, you know, they can get into the air and then you, you inhale that. And over time, it becomes a toxin and actually cause problems with your lungs. That's why people shouldn't be up there in the first place. Well, all of that is circulating in there because the ceiling tiles are in up there in part to keep those particulates up there. In fact, some of those ceiling tiles on the other side has insulation that's fiberglass and it's all over the place. You walk through, you see it hanging out the thing. And I tell you. He up here discussing uh, he, uh, discussing everything else except the school, talking about discipline. He, he still ain't even got the ceiling tiles taken care of. Thanks, host of the cooks. Uh, that ceiling reminds me. Of, yeah, that, that Tetris. That's what I was going to say yesterday because I was talking about that. And I said, yeah, it's like Tetris. I was, in my mind, I was thinking about that. I used to love that game. That was one of my favorite games back in the day. Young people don't know what that's about. Even a song. I love the song. It's like a Russian sailor dance or something. Uh, nah, nah. You can slow it down. Something like da na na da da na da na na. You know, black we got to get the blues in there. You're like, what you talking? I hate what that sounds. Songs that like. All right. Thanks, uh, Kiara, for the super, uh, super chat. Thanks, host other cooks as well. Okay, let's get back to it. Here we go. T-shirt. I might pull up at Bowie State. Get me a Bowie State headband. I might pull up at Morgan <laughs> State. I might pull You're up at crazy. Delaware State. I might pull up at University of Maryland Eastern Shore. I might pull up at Lincoln University. I might pull up at Cheney University. King Kong Consciousness. Hit Duh. the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG School. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, brothers and sisters. Hit the PayPal International Africans. Hit the PayPal International Hit Africans. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Don't tempt me. I'll show up in the courtyard of Howard University at Coppin State, Morgan State, Bowie State, Dell State, UMES with a bullhorn. Don't uh -huh. make me pull a Marcus Garvey outdoor lecture in the middle of the college. I'm going to pull up to the Black Greek stomp. Yard. Shout out to the Black Greek fraternities and sororities. Shout out to the Black Greek fraternities and sororities. Don't make me pull up outside with the bullhorn and just go in on some Garvey type energy. What Don't make me pull about? up with the bullhorn and go in on some Frederick Douglass type energy. Why aren't your celebrity friends funding your dreams? I'm going to let you meditate on that question. I think the question is he, he's about to go off. Watch this. is This is why that video started. He gets crazier and crazier. And we get into the part. I'm telling you all right now, if your discretion is advised, it's getting there. He's just building up. Very obvious. If you know me and you know them, I'm going to let you meditate on that question, because I think the answer is very obvious. If you know me, and you know them. Shout out to the live alkaline water. Get your live alkaline water. Get your live alkaline water, brothers and sisters. Get your live alkaline water. Get your live alkaline water, King Kong. Oh, here he go. This is the part right here. This is the part. He starts snorting and sniffing. Don't you go in that bag and start pulling out pills. Don't do it. I pulled up. Was that some McDonald fries? That's what it was. And, and I ain't going to shame you on that because them McDonald fries is good. <laughs> I used to love McDonald fries. I used to love, uh, was it? The apple turnover, yeah, they, they had good apple toner, turnovers, uh, turnovers, but also I think Burger King had really good apple turnovers. <laughs> I think it was Burger King. That's they had the good apple, but the but the ones at McDonald's that was good. They, back then they had Happy Meals. Y'all remember the Happy Meals? <laughs> you give a child a Happy Meal, they look at it like, "Where's the phone at?" <laughs> I don't want no little cheap little plastic toy. Where's my phone? <laughs> that was a good old days. Yeah, yeah, the fr them fried apple pie. Them things was good. Y'all remember that? No, I never had no no Oreo McFlurry. I used to like the the uh uh the 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 chocolate uh ice cream thing. Uh the what do they call them things? Uh 
Sundays, but it was in a cup. Do y'all remember that? I used to love it. The strawberry one was good too, but I used to love the chocolate one. Boy, I, I, matter of fact, after this, I'm going to McDonald's. <laughs> that's, that's what we call it. We call it McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they do. KFC got good fries. I, I never had no uh, fries. All I got from there was, was the, uh, the back then they had the buckets. Y'all remember the buckets, the, the Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets? Uh, and then uh, also they had butter biscuits. <laughs> the best butter biscuits was the butter biscuits from Popeyes. And put the honey on, put the honey on them butter biscuits. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hit the one. <laughs> That, that, that's right. I'm going, I'm going, Pierre, I'm going. I'm going to go to get my guitar. I, I'm going. To, I'm walking to me. I'm going to sing the whole time. McDonald, McDonald. I'm going to McDonald, McDonald, McDonald. Not to KFC. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going, Pierre. I'm going to get my guitar. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get back to it. I've been goofing off too much tonight, but it is what it is. Okay, yesterday, yesterday's show was too difficult for me. Yeah, McDonald's back in the day, we was kids. We used to love McDonald's. McDonald's was like the best. And we only go there every once in a while because, you know, that's, that's how it was back then. Yeah, y'all, that's just a good but, but, but. <laughs> See that? See that? I start going back to slavery. <laughs> there we have a ball inside the butter biscuit. <laughs> and then, but ain't nothing wrong with the butter biscuit. I've been trying to tell people. Only why people say there's something wrong with the butter biscuit because <laughs> Tyreek. See, he done gave butter biscuits a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. <laughs> Here we go. At about 11.30 last night, I don't know how this got in my hotel room. Here we go. No, no, just hold back, hold back. I was going to get in there and get that applesauce. I'm going to wait. I'll just hold back. Yeah, let's go get the strawberry applesauce. Here we go. Why does he do this? You know, with Umar, it's almost as if he tries to find opportunities to lie. You know what I mean? It's like he tries to, because it, he doesn't even have to show that. Maybe he didn't mean to show it, you know? But it looks like he's picking up because he was just eating the fries. Uh, then the, he probably realized that people saw it on the camera. And then he goes, you know what? I don't know how this got into my hotel room. Someone came in who had a key, came in here and ate the French fries and left this here on next to my pillow. I don't know how it got here. Umar, just don't say, we, first of all, don't nobody care. We know you big pop and you be eating Twizzlers and cheesecake and ham hocks and suck a tass with raw cash. We already know all that. Why you got a front? You eat McDonald. Okay. You it, it, Listen, if you eat McDonald, ain't nobody going to hold you on that. Big Papa, we know we, you know, we, everybody know you like to eat. But you want to pretend like, oh, you know, we're going we're going to have a school. It's going to be 90 percent raw and vegan. Stop, man. Stop, bro. You too big to be talking like that. You need to cut it out. All right. You like to eat. You even said that you said you like to eat and sleep. You said that you said I like to eat. I double up on everything. Then you said I like to sleep a lot. I like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Eat and sleep. That's what you like to do. And you eat McDonald's. You ain't got, listen, you you out there, you hotel, motel, here, there, there, and you ain't got no woman because you out there crushing cookies, so you ain't got no woman to, to have a nice dinner with. So you sitting in there inside of the hotel, motel, Holiday Inn, eating McDonald's. You ain't got a front. You, you ain't got a front. You ain't got a lot of kick it. Just tell the truth and that you was in there eating some McDonald's fries okay and it's okay we're not gonna we, ain't nobody gonna hold it against you but you it's like he has to find a way to lie like i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna I'm lie about this right now i'm gonna lie right here about him yeah. you know you're old but it take you 15 seconds to get up off the floor that's okay i told my son today i said can you bring this up the stair he said dad it's not even heavy i said yeah but i'm, I'm old what you talking about 
you young, go and get up, go on up because we got a gang of stairs. It's just they ain't just a gang of them. I don't even understand. I, like sometimes I just they sit there by the stairs, just be looking up. Jesus, if you can just give me strength, give me strength to get up these stairs. Please, I got because I just got to get up these stairs. <laughs> I'll tell my son to be bringing stuff up. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, listen, a Big Papa Circus, they serve, they serve. It's okay. <laughs> he got sabotaged. <laughs> Someone said, I don't know how these got in here. Someone's trying to sabotage me. Watch that. He's going to say something like that. He's going to say something like that. I'm eating applesauce too. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I turn that heat down, family. I got to turn that heat down. Look at this. <laughs> Thanks, Akiara. Look at this guy. Well, that's a meme in and of itself. Let me, let's go. Here we go. Hit the cash app, brothers and sisters. Hit the PayPal International Africans. Hit the PayPal International Africans. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. Don't tempt me. I'll show up in the courtyard of Howard University at Coppin State, Morgan State, Bowie State, Dell State, UMES with a bullhorn. Don't make me pull a Marcus Garvey outdoor lecture in the middle of the college i'm gonna pull up to the black greek stop you shout out to the black greek fraternities and sororities shout out to the black greek fraternities and sororities don't make me pull up outside with the bullhorn and just go in on some garvey type energy <laughs> don't make me pull up with the bullhorn and go in on some frederick Douglass. I, I don't think they have super size anymore they still have super size i don't think they have it because remember that documentary came out with that uh guy who's a white guy he uh he was eating McDonald's, uh, I don't know, every day for a month or two months, whatever it was, and just put on all this weight. I don't think they do supersize anymore. Here we go. This type energy. Why aren't your celebrity friends funding your dreams? I'm going to let you meditate on that question. I think the question is very obvious if you know me and you know them. I'm going to let you meditate on that question because I think the answer is very obvious if you know me and you know them. Shout out to the live alkaline water. Get your live alkaline water. <laughs> Get your life. Hey, this is just a diversionary tactic right here. He doesn't want to answer that question. So he's trying to, you know, divert. Live alkaline water, brothers and sisters. Get your live alkaline water. Get your live alkaline water, King Kong. See, this is why he goes off. This is in part because people were clowning him a little bit. You can't have it. Look at him start sniffing and snarling. This. He just pulled it out the bag. What is he talking about? I don't know how this guy in the bag is sitting there right next to him. He did. Boy, he he lies so much. He probably was looking in there to see if there was any more fries because he needed some comfort food. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> he said, let me go and see if there's at least because you know how there'd be another a couple of fries sitting on the side that you didn't get. <laughs> he said, let me check in here. Yo. All right. Pulled up at about 1130 last night. I don't know how this got in my hotel room. I don't know how this got in my hotel room because I know I didn't stop at McDonald's. I don't know how this got in my hotel room because I know I didn't stop at McDonald's, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, I have no recollection. Well, you probably was turning the heat down. Hit the one. You in here telling yourself you was probably turning the heat down. Uh, it was late and you you got the munchies and you went to McDonald's. That's all it is. You went to McDonald's and you don't remember. And, and you probably don't remember how you got home. You just woke up in the bed. He wake up in the bed with a filet of fish <laughs> on his chest. Just, <laughs> just sitting there on it to me. He ain't got no shirt on. He just got a fillet of fish on his chest, and it, and it ain't no bread. Just the fillet of fish, the meat part. Just <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> who are who are me waking up with random food on his chest? You don't know how he got the. How he got to bed, how the fool got all this chairs, he's just sitting there on the chair. <laughs> he, wake, he wake up, look down, and go back, go back to sleep. He, 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 don't, he don't care. He go right back to sleep. He just be like, he's look at it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. All right. I'm tripping. Let's get back to it. Here we go. <laughs> you have a tartar sauce rolling all off his elbows. <laughs> Rolled down his arm on off his elbows off the side of the bed. You know. All right. <laughs> they say, Who are you taking a shot? Nah, man. I had tartar. I had that tartar on. <laughs> so, okay. Let's go. I'm stopping at McDonald's. I don't know how this got in my room. Somebody put this in my room last night. It wasn't me. Somebody put this. My vegan Africans. My vegan Africans. My vegan, go. my vegetarian Africans. I did not stop at the McDonald's last night. I didn't. I don't know how this got in my room. Somebody trying to set me up. I did not stop at McDonald's. I sabotage. Someone said it earlier. I don't even know if I said it. Someone said in the chat room, they said sabotage. You know, that's, and that's exactly what it is. Um, I'm just looking this up real quick. This guy, he, he be lying so much. They trying to set me up. I need you to understand, overstand, and understand me. I need you to understand, overstand, and understand me. I did not stop at McDonald's. I didn't. I did not do that. I'm working on my diet. Maybe I was sleepwalking last night. I might have was sleepwalking last night. this guy talking about it's good for confessions too s right confession i'm looking for this this uh, file right now I, I i i'm gonna i have to find it uh i'm gonna need it anyway but i gotta find this file i'm looking up here yeah, like I said, he's a pathological liar. And he, once he starts, it just and it's so unnecessary too. That's like I'm, I was saying earlier. It's like he tries to find reasons to lie, even though it's so unnecessary. We used to have the saying: you don't have to lie to kick it. You know, it's not even necessary. But he has to turn into this whole fanciful story and how he don't know. And then he says, "I, I didn't go." And then he says, oh, "Maybe I was sleepwalking." And he just pulled the thing out the bag. It was sitting right there next to him. Yeah, he does. Yeah, but but guess what, Nursery Lady? It, this is just the introduction. The reason why we're watching this video because there's a segment in here where he goes crazy, so disrespectful towards black women. And I want to find out why did he go to that point because he starts off this video rather calm, and I can see it ratcheting it up uh, right here. So we'll see where this goes. Here we go. Last night, I might have sleep sleptwalk last night, and I might in my sleepwalking, I might have went through the drive through without being conscious. I might have went through the drive through while I was sleepwalking and I might have got me a fish fillet. I might have got me a. Didn't I just tell y'all he woke up with a fish fillet on his chest? I told y'all. And it was just the meat, the, the bun, and everything. He was gone. It just, I told y'all he's the one. Now he's saying he slept walk. <laughs> he didn't crip walk, he slept walk. <laughs> Some of this y'all need to don't say that. Here we go. The fish fillet meal. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Don't charge it to my head. My heart charge it to my head. Sometimes I'll be sleepwalking through the hood. If you ever catch King Kong sleepwalking through the hood, I need you to just wake me up a little bit, shake me up, Doctor Umar. You sleepwalking. You you sleepwalking right now. I think I might have accidentally was sleepwalking and I walked through the McDonald's drive through and got a fish fillet meal because it was 11.30 at night. I was kind of hungry. Exactly 11.30, huh? You sure had know some details to, so to not know what happened. Y'all see what I'm saying? See, that's that's what happened in them shows I be watching. I shouldn't be watching them, but them shows, they, they be interrogating people and they be having all these details and they say, I don't know nothing about it, but then they start running their mouth. And this is what Umar doing right here. Umar, you went to McDonald's. So what? It's no big deal, man. You ain't got to do all this. Agree. I was tired, and I might have accidentally had a REM sleep, a deep REM sleep sleepwalk, and I might have accidentally picked up a fish fillet. Charge it to my head, not my heart. Vegetarian. 
<laughs> he said, I might have accidentally picked up a fish fillet. Wow. Charge it to my head, not my heart, vegetarians. Charge it to my head, not my heart, my vegan Africans. Okay? I thought I was dreaming, but I might have been sleepwalking because I woke up and this was in the bed with me. I woke up and this was in the bed. Didn't I just tell y'all? I just told y'all, hit the one. I, mean, I, I know this guy. He just, boy, he's just, he's a habitual liar. In the bed with me. So let's get back to the message. So I'm going to get it out my system with the alkaline. I'm going to flush it out with the alkaline water. I'm going to flush it out with the alkaline water. I'm going to flush it out with that. Yeah, but I thought you just said that you didn't eat it. You didn't have it. You don't know how it got in your room, but now you're going to flush it out. See? Alkaline water. Yeah, he eating in the bed. I'm going to flush out the filet of fish. It was late. I was tired. <laughs> I told y'all it was a filet of fish, didn't I? Is that what you call it? I told y'all. And here he is. He always, I told y'all in advance. He up here spitting water out and everything. I'm going to flush it out with the alkaline water. I'm going to flush it out with the alkaline water. I'm going to flush out the filet of fish. It was late. I was tired. I was sleepwalking. I had no control over. I was, I was sleepwalking. I'm going to flush it out with the alkaline water. No oh, goodness, man. This guy. Number three, black parents. Number three. Yeah, we had number three finally. Document, document, document. The biggest mistake black parents make is you do not document. White culture is based on documentation. If you don't keep a log, if you don't keep a journal, if you don't keep a paper trail, if you don't keep an email trail, you will never win your complaint against your child's teacher. You will never win your complaint against your child's IEP team. You will never win your complaint against your child's school. Stop being lazy. You have a cell phone. You have a cell phone. You have a cell phone. So when you leave the meeting, go to your audio messages and do a quick one minute audio message. Today, I met with Principal Slobenberger and we hate black children charter school. And it's got to be burger. It has to be burger, right? Baltimore, Maryland. We hate black children charter school. Capitol Heights, Maryland. We hate black children charter school. Eastern Shore, Maryland. He told me that he was going to remove the suspension from my child's See, this is his imagination going wild. Record because this should have been a detention, not a suspension. There you go. Because you're not going to remember that six months from now. You're not going to remember that three months from now. You have too much going on in your life. You need documentation. Document everything. Special ed parents, document. Regular ed parents, document. Gifted parents, document. College prep parents, document. Low achieving student parents, document and for you parents who got children who don't know how to behave for you parents who don't have children who have children who don't know how to behave for you parents who have children who don't know how to behave you better be documenting every day because you're going to need all your notes to save your badass child you're going to need all your notes to save your badass child you're going to need all your notes to save your badass child I know it's not easy, single mothers. See, didn't I just tell you all this? Hit the one. I need some credit right now. I just told y'all. Didn't I just tell y'all this? It, I mean, I just didn't. It was before. But I, I need some credit on this. That's how I tell y'all. I know I know this guy. I've studied him extensively. And I know. I already knew. I told y'all in advance. And here it is. I, just, I, t I told people in advance. And just like clockwork, there it is. thank y'all so much i appreciate it. what's up donald uh just like clockwork it, it, it goes exactly as i said all right thank y'all for, for thank you so much and y'all by the way if y'all haven't hit, hit the like button go and hit the like button we got a thousand sixty people here right now if y'all hit the like button i appreciate it 
Uh, I figure we're going to be here for about another 45 minutes. I want to get to another video, but we're just going to have to table that uh, for a another live stream. OK. What's up, Cedri? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I just like clockwork. I know it's not easy, single fathers. I know it's not easy. Sing oh, he says single fathers. I wasn't anticipating that. Let's see where this goes. Single mothers. I know it's not easy, single fathers. That's why I'm about to put together. Here he is. Listen, he, he's just making this up on the spot. He does this every single time. Head moves. That's why I'm going to do this. And he never, none of it ever comes into fruition. Here you go. An academic explosion for black parents. What are we talking about here? And I'm going to create an academic explosion, <laughs> explosion for parents. What does that have to do with <laughs> what in the world? Here? What is he talking about? What do y'all think about that? I'm going to do five academic explosion conferences. I'm going to do five single black parent conferences. What do y'all think about that? Married black parents can come too, but we're going to focus on single black parents. What do y'all think about a single black parents conference? Wait, well, that's not what you said. You said academics and now you're saying singles? What? See, I told y'all that, that, that all of this education stuff is just about trying to get, at the, get the draws. What do y'all think about a conference for the single black mother, the single black father, the auntie, the uncle, the big brother, the big sister, the grandparent who's raising their... What do y'all think about a Dr. Umar? What about the kids? Single black parent conference explosion. What do y'all think about that? Well, you need to stop spitting all over the place. What do y'all think about that? So this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And the first one is probably going to be in Maryland. The probably. first one is probably <laughs> going to be in Maryland. Yeah, probably. The first one is probably going to be right here in Maryland. If any of you want to present at the single black parents conference, he just making it if up you are a nurse, a therapist, if you are a we're going to have a black book bazaar. OK. We're going to have a black book fair at the single black parents. So if you're a black author, if you have children's books or books for black parents, no ghetto novels, no hip hop magazines, Here we go. no ghetto novels, no hip hop magazines. He always got to talk in a disparaging way, like all black people are ghetto, don't take care of their kids and single mothers and out here. Every single time. No ghetto novels, no hip hop magazine. But if you a nurse, a therapist, a social worker, community organizer, parent advocate, parent support group, and you want to present at Dr. Umar's single black parent conference, what do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? Single black parent conference with a black book fair, a black market, a black marketplace, a black book fair. Oh, yes. I'm about to. I've already changed the game, but I'm really about to change the game. See, I've been playing with y'all these past 13 years that of being practice. the number one king of all black consciousness on the planet. I, I was just playing with y'all the past. He said the same thing about three years ago. He said, I'm just practicing. Yeah, I know. But all of this sounds cultish. All of it sounds cultish. See, the, the good thing, though, with Umar is that nothing ever comes into fruition. He doesn't he's not a doer. He's a, just a talker. And, and he talks and talks his head movies and he just start throwing out random stuff and ain't got nothing to do with nothing. And it's just it don't even make no sense. None of it makes sense. So n there's not going to be a singles convention. He's been talking about that now for four years and 11 months. It hasn't happened. The only thing that he's done and it's really black women did for him was throw two parties in the middle of the street of these trap banners in Wilmington, Delaware with granny archers. This guy, he's just anyway. 13 years being the king of black consciousness on the entire planet, seven continents. I just was playing with y'all. Now it's time to get down to business. Single black parent conference coming soon. He's he been turning that featuring black marketplace. 
He's been turned. I can tell. Black hey, I Book like Fair. This. I want all the black children's authors to be in the building. We're all my black children's book authors who got children with natural hair in their books. Where are all my black children's book authors at? Make some noise. Where are my black children's book authors at? Shout out to all my black children's book authors. With natural headed black girls and boys. <sighs> With dark skin black boys and girls in your book. Light skin black girls and boys. Brown skin black girls and boys in your book. Pina Colada. Yeah. Single Black Parent Conference. Now, let me say this to the brotherhood. Here we go. Let me say this to the brotherhood. Let me say this to the brotherhood. Don't come to the Single Black Parents Conference. Wifey shopping. My brothers, do not come to my Single Black Parents Conference wifey hunting. If you want a wifey hunt, you come to the conscious... <laughs> Singles convention. The conscious yeah. singles convention is if you want a wifey hunt. Mm -hmm. The single black parent conference. No, that's where you go to go find some to crush and know the cookies. That's what you're talking about. Is to help us raise our children. You understand me, brothers? Yeah, Naeem. We, we must stay is... focused. We must stay exactly. focused. We must stay focused. The single black parent conference is not the conscious singles convention. The Single Black Parent Conference is not the Conscious Singles Convention. The Single Black Parent Conference is not the Conscious Singles Convention. We're not doing ebooks, my queen. We want print books. Here we go. We don't want to do no PDF, even though it's, you can have it automatically. It's, it's residual income. You don't have to do any shipping, any of that kind of stuff. But he's so stuck in the past when it comes to technology that he wants hardcover, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, computers are bad for our children's eyes. It's amazing how he justifies his own ineptitude when it comes to technology. And he's blinking when he says it. They're bad for their eyes. These kids these days, they stay on computers, on their smartphone. Your smartphone is a computer. It has all of the components, the basic components that a computer would have. Processor, uh, memory, uh, the list goes on and on. Everything that you would need in order to run a computer, the basics are that's what your smartphone is. It's a it's a small computer. Processing power, the list goes on and on. Uh, Umar up here talking and, and Umar stay on his phone, but somehow computers are bad for the children's eyes. That's why we're going to be using typewriters. Just make me want to just pull up. No, let me not do it. Anyway, let's keep going. Computers are bad for our children's eyes. Everybody's going to need glasses if we're going to raise our children on computer screens. Be careful. The computer screen is not the friend of your child's. It sounds like this guy is tweaking right now. I'm sorry. It's just, that's what it sounds like. Eyes. We want printed books. But anyway, getting back to the point, document, 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 document. Next up, know the statistics for your child's school district. Know the statistics for your child's school district. Know the statistics for your child's school district. What do I mean by that? What is the average reading level? of fifth graders in your child's school district? What is the average math level of fourth graders in your child's school district? What is the average comprehension skill level of sixth graders in your child's school district? How did the children in your child's grade perform last year on the state achievement tests? Why don't you know that? You should know 
how the children in your child's grade scored overall in your district last year. You know why you need to know that, black parents? Why? You know why you need to know that, black parents? Why? You want to know why you need to know that, black parents? Yeah. Is when they try to recruit your child for special ed. When the slave catchers inside your child's school try to recruit oh your child for the special ed auction block, you can say time out. Yes, my child is behind in reading. Yes, my child is behind in reading. But so is almost every other kid in his grade. Why y'all singling out my child? Yes, my daughter is behind in math. Yes, my daughter is behind in math. Yes, my daughter is behind in math. But according to the statistics at the State Department of Education on your district's website, most children in my daughter's grade scored exactly as she did. So why are you singling my daughter out for special education? Why are you singling my daughter out for special education? You must know the statistics for your school district so you can intelligently and effectively combat the special ed slave patrol when they come to kidnap your child what? into special education. Oh, yes. When the special ed slave patrol come to kidnap your child. Yeah, into yeah, yeah. I, I remember Umar said that he had a tablet, but it was a notebook. Yeah, absolutely. He, he's. I have a video where Umar he pulls out a notebook and he has written down in the notebook the names of donors and how much they donated. That's not how things are done. That's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. And and, and there are people who did, they just they don't take them in, in modern technology doesn't click for them. And I get that. But if you're going to be an educator and if you're going to open up a school for black boys, you're going to be the principal. One of the essential elements of a school would it, it would need the IT infrastructure, you know, and, and that includes all of the devices that would be used, including um, the, the, the uh, it, could, it could be tablets that the children use, notebooks that the children use. But if you say notebook to Umar, he's going to think in terms of a paper notebook. Okay, so when and if you say tablet, he's thinking of a paper tablet. You know that you open up like that and you just write down on it. and he actually had a little paper tablet and he's just right and i've seen him in other videos where he just opens up a little and he says and i have it all in here all my ideas i said man i uh, think for super chat uh bahia yeah he said you know he just takes things to to the extreme it's so out, far out there it don't even make any sense uh we got a thousand sixty four people in the building y'all hit the like button we're getting close to the park because we're already halfway through here we go. you have to be able to spit the statistics. Why are you singling my child out when most of the children in my child's grade is reading, comprehending, computing at the same level? Next point. Is or are, anyway. Know your child's IEP. Know your child's IEP. Know your child's IEP. Know your child's IEP. It is amazing to me. You know what? Can I tell y'all a story? Oh, goodness. Here I can go. count on one hand in 25 years. I can count on one hand 25 years. 25 years. The amount of black parents I met who actually read their child's psychological evaluation and complete IEP. I can count on one hand in 25 years the amount of black parents I've met who have read the child's IEP. And well, part, part, of the reason why Umar, part of the reason why Umar is you, you uh, oh, it's buffering. Okay, let me know if, if it comes back on y'all. Y'all let me know. Let me just I'll pause this for a moment. He, he just making this up. But one of the reasons why you don't have because you don't have a work history of dealing with parents. Okay, that, that's the whole I mean, you don't. I shouldn't say that. Let me take that back. You don't have an extensive work history or a significant work history with dealing with parents in the first place. Okay, but even still, you're exaggerating, but this is just to make black parents look bad. That's all this is. I told people that's what he's gonna do and that's what he's doing here. In psychological evaluation, cover to cover. I can count on one hand how many black parents I met 
who have read their child's psychological evaluation and IEP cover to cover. That is unacceptable. Why are you getting the child value in special ed? And you will not even read the psychological evaluation report. Why are you putting your child in special ed when you will not even take the time to read their IEP from cover to cover? Black parents are a major part of the school to prison pipeline. Black parents are a major part of the school to prison pipeline. Black parents are a major part of the school to prison pipeline. But I bet you you'll be watching the BET Awards on the 223rd Memorial of Gable Process Hain. I bet you'll be watching the BET Awards on the 223rd Memorial of the Prophet Gabe Process Hanging on October the 10th of 1800, organized of the largest slave revolt in American history. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. I, 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 I think people were saying uh, that something wrong with my connection. I'm looking like it does look like my connection is stable. It's on my own Wi Fi. Try plugging to your router or uh, moving closer to it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens to everybody. Okay, let me just check to see if, if um, is it still, let's see, are we still live streaming? Are we still live streaming? If so, please be patient. I am sure that it will resolve itself. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, I pay for, we, we get uh, one gigabyte to the box. So it, we, it, I should, it should fix itself. Uh, just, I guess there's something going on right now. Um, what, what was I going to say? Um, I, I've been looking for, I was, and I have it, but I was looking for the video. I just haven't seen it. I haven't watched it in years where Umar was, uh, he was in a play and he was, he was acting like he was Frederick Douglass and he had a wig on. Um, and I was looking online to see if I could find it. I, I don't even think that it's still online. Um, I wonder if Black Anonymous has that. Uh, if anyone knows what the title is of that bill, if you can type it, so just hashtag it, type it inside the chat room, and, and I'll pull it up. I'll keep looking, though, as we live stream here. Okay, okay let's get back to the bill. Until that time, Gabriel Proctor was hanged October 10th, and they want to give us the BET Coonery Awards on the same day we should be remembering Gabriel Proctor's sacrifice. They want to give us the BET Career Awards on the same day should be memorializing April Prosser's sacrifice. How you got time to watch the BET Awards? How you got time to watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Love and Hip Hop Miami? Oh, yeah. People say it's still not working. Yeah, it has to have something with the service. There's probably some sort of a service interruption or a decrease in bandwidth for some reason right now. As much I can do, everyone just hang on and just hold on just a minute. Uh, no, I don't have no hot <laughs> No, y'all no, don't stop. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Restart stream. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to take it, everybody. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I already did all of that. Yeah, I've already, and I closed out all the windows I can close. Let me just try this right here. Yeah, that would make a difference. And let me just check my um, task manager. Yeah, it's not the computer. There's something going on with the internet in, uh, in the area right now. That's what the issue is. Yeah, I'm only using 34% of my memory. CPU says it's 10%. GPU is 1%. So that's not the issue. 
I am connected. Yeah, that's not it. I could go Wi-Fi, though. That may make a difference. But I don't think it will because I definitely would get more bandwidth through the ethernet unless there's some sort of issue with the wireless router downstairs yeah let me check downstairs real quick because maybe let me check the wireless router i'll be right back yeah my apologies everyone i'll be right back give me a second Uh, how is your internet? Uh, mm -hmm. Is your internet okay? It's kind of bad right now. Yeah, okay. And the routers, but are you on uh, Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi? I'm on Ethernet. It's kind of working right now. Okay. Thanks, sir. All right. Yeah, I just think it's in the area. There's something going on. There's nothing I can do about that. Okay, you gotta let me know before you come up though, so okay. All right. Uh, it's amazing to me that black parents are even entertaining Jermaine's way of thinking. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I, but I, I don't think there's a lot. Uh, audio sounds better. How's the audio now? It's getting better. You good now? Okay, y'all let me know how things are right now. If so, I'll, I'll keep going. I apologize for it. So every once in a while we get technical uh, difficulties. Um, I, don't, I don't think that, uh, hold on one second. Yeah, I don't think that, that there are a lot of black parents uh, who entertain Umar's way of thinking. I think that there's a lot of uh, black parents who are in dire situations and they're just trying to get help from anyone. And Umar's out there on the internet and so uh, because he's on the internet, uh, people feel like they're he's accessible, and then they go to him. Okay, is it better now? Okay, cool. Yeah, a lot of people left. Hopefully, they'll come back. Okay, um, uh, thanks for super uh, super chat, uh, Sigmund. And did I get that one too? Okay, yeah. Let's get back to it. I've been trying to find that Frederick Douglass uh, uh, video. Uh, it, it's one of the weirdest things. He's standing on stage, just looking as about as goofy as you can look. Okay. Okay, let's go back. Let me go ahead and play this. You got time to do all that and you haven't even read your child's psychological evaluation. This is why we need the single black parent conference. This is why we need the single black parent conference. This is why we need the single black parent conference. This is why we need the single black parent conference because we got to get y'all right. We got to get y'all right. Y'all the problem. We're going to have somebody from the foster care system, adoptive care system. We're going to have somebody from the Department of Human Services that can give our mothers and fathers, single mothers and single fathers and single brothers and single sisters and single. Notice how everything is single. He rarely says single fathers. So that's that's actually I, I, I commend him for doing that. <laughs> But notice how it's never a family that's, you know, the, the husband and wife or the mother and father that are, you know, it, together. He never speaks like that. It's not in this conceptual reality, in fact. Grandparents, some tips on how to stop the system from taking your child. Some tips on how to stop the system from taking your child. Single Black Parent Conference is coming, brothers and sisters. Single Black Parent Conference is coming, brothers and sisters. Your book assisted me with a letter I wrote to my son high school regarding FERPA. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Jennifer. I'm glad my book was able to help you. Thank you, Sister Jennifer. I'm glad my book was able to help you. Thank you, Sister Jennifer. I'm glad my book was able to help you, Sister. You must know your child's IEP. You must know your child's psychological evaluation. Number six, be consistent with the school. Be consistent with the school. Don't be all engaged in September, but you don't check in with the teacher in October. Don't be ready to fight for your child in November, but you don't show up 
for the report card conferences in December. That's right. Be consistent. Consistency equals commitment. Did he Everybody say report say that. card conference? Consistency equals. He said report card conference. He's so he's so backwards and he ain't. That's why I see he ain't worked in the school system in a decade. And when it, they have te they have parent teacher conferences, Umar. Did you know that? That's what they do these days. And everything's online anyway. So if it's anything but grades, you can just look it up yourself. It's called Skyward, at least out here. It's called Skyward. I don't know what it's called in other places. Where, where, where y'all stay? What is it called where y'all stay? And you can go on there and see what, because trust me, I've been on there. <laughs> I have to stay off of it. I tell listen, baby, you just, if you can look at it, <laughs> you just tell me, just look at it, report back to me. I don't, I don't want to get on there. <laughs> Because they know how I am when it comes to academics. I'm like, look, you need to get this up. I don't want to hear nothing else. Get on it right now. Now, I don't even say nothing else after that. They'd be like, that's going to be mad. I said, no, I'm not mad. Just handle your business. <laughs> you know? <laughs> then they do it. They get it done. But but I don't like to have to be, you know, so I'd say, listen, baby, if you can just look on there and just let report back to me. And then we talk about it. I said, okay, well, you go and tell them because I ain't going to do it. Um. Anyway, uh grades and all that kind of stuff you can look online you can it's in real time you can see what assignments have been turned in what uh, uh what has been graded already what has not been graded what's coming down the line that type of thing you can see uh their gpa their current gpa and all that kind of stuff too but umar doesn't know that because uh he doesn't have an extensive his history uh working with children um and he's not an educator either he's never worked as a, as a teacher okay that's another example he don't even know what he's talking about it's commitment Everybody say that consistency equals commitment. Consistency equals commitment in your relationships. Consistency equals commitment on your job. Consistency equals commitment in your business. Consistency equals commitment when you are raising your children. Be consistent with the school. Be consistent with the visits. Be consistent with checking homework. Be consistent with your discipline of your child. Be consistent going to back to school night. Be consistent with report card conferences. Consistency equals commitment. When a black woman says, Dr. Umar, my man is not consistent. Sometimes he show me that he cares. Sometimes he don't. He's not consistent. If he's not consistent, he's not committed. Black man, if your woman... Well, Umar, you're talking about yourself. You're not committed. But you see how it goes from education to now it's some sort of a relationship. This is he going to start talking freak talk. Why? It's not consistent. She not committed. How do you judge commitment? You judge commitment through consistency. You judge commitment through consistency. You judge commitment through consistency. You know, he hasn't been consistent with opening up this school and getting work done because that shows a lack of commitment, right? Uh, can y'all is, is can y'all hear me? And uh, let me know in the chat room is it streaming properly because I'm still getting bad uh, bandwidth up here. Let me know. Consistency equals commitment. I'm gonna talk about that in my for sisters only relationships and dating book. I'm gonna talk about that in my for sisters only relationships and dating book. I'm gonna talk about that in my for sisters only relationships. And dating book consistency okay, cool. Thank Thank so equals much. commitment. And Next thanks for up, being a patient. Too. Be now business minded it. with your child's school, not friendly. Oh, the video's not be good. Be business minded okay. with your child's school, not friendly. Be business minded <laughs> wow. with your child's feet. school, not friendly. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to reschedule because we, we're so far in. Um, if y'all can just bear with this until uh, it corrects itself or um, we finish. I'm trying to, um, let me see if I can check. Let, hold on one second. I'll let it play, but y'all can, as long as you can hear, I'll let it play. I'm, I'm, let me go see if I can, you know, my uh, ISP and see what's going Be on. Be business minded with your child's school. I love you too, Karan. Be business minded with your child's school. You black mothers, y'all come off too friendly. Black fathers tend to know better. Black fathers tend to know better. 
see this black fathers you're better than the black mothers and this is where he's going to start going in and, and talking crazy okay uh listen um i'm gonna say it right now viewer discretion is advised black fathers tend to know better black fathers tend to know better but black mothers y'all go into them <laughs> schools smiling laughing acting like the teacher is your friend you better stop yeah, I'm not hearing the audio. Hold on one second. Only relationships in dating book. Consistency equals commitment. Next up, be business minded with your child's school, not friendly. Be business minded with your child's school, not friendly. Be business minded with your child's school, not friendly. Be business minded with your child's school. I love you too, Karen. Be business minded with your child's school. You black mothers, y'all come off too friendly. Black fathers tend to know better. Black fathers. Yeah, and we're having some serious problems now, y'all. Uh, I can't even hear the audio myself. Um, let me see here. I mean, what I could do is try to free up some bandwidth, but, but really, I mean, what I'm paying for, my, I should have plenty of bandwidth, but I can tell everyone else to get off. I mean, let me go tell these kids to get off the internet. All of them on it, too. I already know they are. You can hear it. Okay. All right, let me, let me go ahead and let this play, and then I'll be right back. Be business-minded with your child's school. I love you too, Karen. Be business minded with your child's school. You black mothers, y'all come off too friendly. Black fathers tend to know better. 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 But black mothers, y'all go into them schools smiling, uh, laughing, acting like the teacher is your friend. You better stop. Okay. So just if you can get off the internet. Sister Paulina, how you doing, Sister Paulina? How you doing, Sister Paulina? I'll be Stop are smiling you, with the school. Yeah, that's they probably not why I'm live streaming and the bandwidth is really low. They not. You can uh, show get out them of that you mean until I business. The live stream, okay? Show up Thank you. like you mean business. That means black mother. Don't go to the school in your damn pajamas. The next time I see a black mother, you know what? At the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, I'm gonna have a super circle water gun. At the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, I'm gonna have a super soaker water gun invented by a black man, by the way. Invented by a black man. Okay, uh, hopefully this helps out a little bit, but now we're getting to that part. Okay, uh, everyone, the viewer discretion is advised. Let me know if you if you guys can actually see and hear me. And then we'll just go ahead and, and uh, get through this. I apologize for the, the technical issues, okay? Uh, there was a couple other super chats too. What's up, Unc and all the fam? Are you aware of the Eastside Charter School that was opened last year in 2023 in Wilmington near FTMG? Check it out. All right, I'll go look at it right now. Yeah, let me go look right. Well, okay, hold on. I should maybe, I, let me, what I, no, let me not do that. Let's stay on task because we got to get through this because of the other technical issues, but let me uh i'll take i'll go ahead and write this down as a note it's called the east side charter school open in 2023 in wilmington near fdmg okay yeah, i'll look at this uh when this live stream is over with okay and uh, good to see you too conscious jedi ha uh, happy new year to you uh, Bahia says he's also not involved with his children's education. He's sure is not. He's not involved in their lives, period. Uh, again, he, he wants to educate everyone else's kids, but he don't even he's not even part of the education process for his own. He wants to, to deal with everybody else's kids, but he only deal with his own kids. OK, thank you for Super Chat. Uh, call on the spirit of mama to, to fix you. <laughs> yeah, mama owe y'all to fix that internet. Yeah. Yeah, this doesn't happen often, but it, it's happening. And you know, it, it is what it is. Not much uh, I can do about it. Um, Okay, let's get back uh, going here. Be business minded with your child's school. I love you too, Karen. 
be business minded with your child's school. You black mothers, y'all come off too friendly. Yeah, I'll be right back. Black fathers tend to know better. Black fathers tend to know better. Black fathers tend to know better. <laughs> black fathers tend to know better. But black mothers, y'all go into them schools smiling, laughing, acting like the teacher is your friend. You better stop. Sister Paulina, how you doing, Sister Paulina? How you doing, Sister Paulina? Stop smiling with the school. They not your friend. They not. Show them you mean business. Show up like you mean business that means black mother don't go to the school in your damn pajamas the next time i see a black mother you know what at the frederick douglas marcus garvey academy i'm gonna have a super circle water gun at the frederick douglas marcus garvey academy i'm gonna have a only relationships and dating I'm sorry, book. I keep missing consistency this I'm, I'm, equals gonna get commitment through. next up be business pajamas. minded with your child's school not friendly. Hashtag pajamas. Be business minded with your child's school. Not friendly. Be business minded with your child's school. Not friendly. Be business minded with your child's school. I love you too, Karan. Be business minded with your child's school. You black mothers, y'all come off too friendly. Black fathers tend to know better. Black fathers tend to know better. Black fathers tend to to know better black fathers tend to know better but black mothers y'all go into them schools smiling laughing acting like the teacher is your friend you better stop sister paulina how you doing sister paulina how you doing sister paulina stop smiling with the school they not your friend they not show them you mean business show up like you mean business that means black mother don't go to the school in your damn pajamas the next time i see a black mother you know what at the frederick Doug he keeps saying pajama pajama douglas marcus garvey academy i'm gonna have a super circle water gun at the frederick douglas marcus garvey academy i'm gonna have a super soaker water gun Invented by a black man, by the way. Invented by a black man, by the way. Invented by a black man, by the way. I'm going to have a super soaker water gun. And if any black mother walks into the doors of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy for Pan-African Excellence in your pajamas, I'm telling you now. If you walk into my school in your pajamas, I'm a super soaker your ass from head to toe. And I'm going to make sure I mess your hair up, your weave in the process. I'm telling you now. See, we are independent school. We can do that. We not a charter school. We not See what I mean? He, he's a megalomaniac. He thinks he can do whatever he wants. That's why he calls it independent. He can discriminate based on race. He can discriminate based on uh sexual orientation he can discriminate based upon what kind of hair you have if you got a weave or not this guy he's, he's out there at a charter school we not a public school we independent this is garvey talking we independent so i'm telling all my black okay you're not a school it's abandoned building black mothers now when you show up to drop your son off at the frederick douglas marcus garvey academy Stay your ass in the car if you got your pajamas on. Because if you come in my school with your pajamas, I'm a super soaker your ass from head to toe. And I'm going to make sure I mess up your blind weave. I'm telling you now, this is King Kong. He crazy. He so crazy. Come to my school with your damn pajamas on, black mother. <laughs> pajamas. What are pajamas? That's all I want to know. You just crawled out the bed after getting bent over, and you're going to come out the house straight out the bed with sex crumbs all over your body. You're going to crawl out the bed and come to my school with sex crumbs all over your body. 
looking like a damn ghost because all that makeup you wear then ate your natural skin juices up. All that makeup you wear on your face then ate your natural skin juices up so you look like a damn ghost without makeup with 10 feet long eyelashes. You show up at my school in some pajamas. I'm a, I'm a grab the super so I'm a grab the super. I'm a grab the super soaker. I'm a, I'm a grab the super soaker water gun. I'm a grab the super soaker water gun. I'm a aim at your weave, your perm, your blind extensions, and I'm a super soaker your ass from head to toe. Oh yes. Oh yes. FDMG. FDMG is coming, baby. FDMG is coming. You got one time to show up in your pajamas. <laughs> One time to show up in your pajamas. Why would they be showing up in their pajamas, Umar, in the first place? See what I'm saying? This guy, he out there. Something wrong with him. Are we still streaming? Can, can y'all hear this and see me? I don't even know. I just want to get through it. I don't even know what to say. This guy, he, he's so unhinged. It's, it's just... I'm in contact with my ISP here. Uh, okay, y'all can hear. The audio is out of sync. Okay, I'm, I apologize. I'm so sorry, everybody. But we're almost done, though. We're almost done. Just give me one second here. Okay. That is so... That is so unprofessional to crawl out your bed with your man's juices dried up on your thigh, your juices dried up on your cheeks. What? Viewer discretion is advised. I apologize to you women in the building. What is he saying? Yeah, I know. I was going to say this yesterday because, you know, uh, Francis Cress Rosen, she said that the guns are symbolic representations of peens. So he's doing all of this flashing around with this thing and all this with this the uh, uh, water gun. I mean, who even thinks like that in the first place? This guy. Shoot, my ISP, y'all going to be owing me some money, much money I pay for this. I pay for it specifically so I can live stream. OK, anyway, y'all tripping today. With your man's juices dried up on your thigh, your juice is dried up on your cheeks what does that mean i mean it's all gross but what does that second thing mean dried up on what what kind of freak talk this guy something's wrong with him this it's not normal this is not normal this is a principle he been turning that heat down. That's what the problem is. No, I ain't walking it off. We're going to get through this, but we got to get done. <laughs> I'm so tired. This guy. It, it's... And you crawled your ashy ass out the bed with sex. <sighs> oh, my God. Your chat room needs to stop. Yeah, he wants to teach children, huh? What kind of educator talks like that? And it's not, listen, Bobby, it's not even that. It's like, what kind of man talks like this? And on live talking like this? I don't know, Fernando. I don't, I don't know what he's trying to say, but all of it is, is over the top and, and unnecessary. You know, he, he, got a, he has a problem. He is. He, he, Michael, he's weird. He's a weirdo. Scrums all over you. And your, nas and your nasty pajamas is dried up on your cheeks and you crawled your ashy ass out the bed with sex crumbs all over you and your nasty pajamas and you think you're going to come to the frederick duck and you think you're going to walk into my school and then you're going to drop them off late most of you pajama queens most of you pajama mamas that's what i'm gonna call you pajama mama are you a pajama mama are you a pajama mama? Are you that pajama mama who be crawling out the bed with sex crumbs on you? Look at this weirdo. 
putting your dusty pajamas on flip flops. Crust yeah, in your are. eye, crustache around your mouth. What? You didn't go to bed till four o'clock, so you woke up late. Because your bend over session didn't start till about one in the morning till Mike Mike got free from selling his weed pack. This guy. Let's say your home is getting 105% of your plan speed. Y'all tripping, and I ain't getting no 100%. Anyway, y'all messing up my show today. Y'all gonna be hearing from me. I think he was turning the heat down. So Mike Mike didn't get to your house till 1.30. You and Mike Mike. <laughs> 1.30. He's saying 1.30 a.m., right? Didn't go to sleep till 4 o'clock because y'all was... What? Making black magic. And so you want to. <laughs> he couldn't say making love. He said black magic. <laughs> I wouldn't mind making some black magic to that family. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do tonight? I'm going to make some black magic, family. I'm going to make me some black magic. Oh, yes, family. When was this? Eight months ago, it says the Mayan Fathers March with Dr. Umar Johnson in Memphis. What? He's not even a father. He don't even take care of his kids. Anyway. Bring your son late. You want to sign him in late. Oh, Dr. Umar, I'm so sorry I overslept. Dr. Umar, I'm so sorry I overslept. And you think you're going to bring your late ass in my school? You think you're going to bring your late ass in my school with sex crumbs all on you? No, oh, stop talking like that, Umar. I'm going to line your ass up. I'm going to line you up. I'm telling you right now, black mother. And I'm going to aim at that weave. I'm going to aim at that perm and that blonde hair. Y'all know I can't stand a black woman with blonde hair. You know I can't stand a black woman. Oh, I'm going to line you up. And I'm a super soaker your ass. Since you didn't want to wash your ass before you brought your son in. Since you didn't want to wash your ass and you crawled out the bed with sex crumbs. Since you didn't want to wash your ass. I'm going to put some alkaline water and I'm going to put a little. Uh, I'm going to put some. Uh, some. Uh, some. Uh, what do we call it? The African black soap. I'm going to put some African black soap since you don't want to wash your ass before you brought your son to my school after you had the sex crumbs. I'm going to put some African shea butter soap in here with the alkaline water. With the alkaline water. In fact, I'm going to turn this into a soup. This is a super circle bomb. I'm going to just bomb her ass. I'm going to just bomb. Do, do, do. Super. This guy is out of control. You know what? I'm looking at the quality here. It's a horrible quality. Um, I, I will probably um, do a video with just this section sometime in the future um, and probably just speak specifically about this segment of this video because uh, I think that it's it's uh, very important for people. And it also actually, I think it would be good because people will be able to focus simply on this uh, and nothing else. Um, and it would be a short video, probably be about 15 minutes. But I'm, I'm going to end up doing that at some point. Uh, and again, I apologize for the um, the uh, quality, uh, video quality. You know, I could try, one of the things I could try is I could unplug. Well, you know, I don't want to do that. Let, let, let's go ahead and finish up with this video. And um, at some point, we'll revisit this, just this section. All right, here we What's go. so good? I can't stay in a pajama mama. Always late, always in your pajamas. Always bringing your son to school late. Always in your... Do we have any pajama mamas on the live? Be honest, ladies. If you one of those irresponsible, undisciplined... If, they're, if they are going to have dorms, how can they be late? Yeah, but the thing is that the, that was what he initially sold people on, the dormitories for St. Paul's, uh, St. Paul's College. But uh, since that time, of course, he's acquired the Trap Banners and Wilmington's. There are no facilities for dorms. There's not even a cafeteria in those buildings. 
so at this point, the idea of having dorms and having the children stay there, uh, that's not even possible based on, upon the facilities. But thank goodness anyway. I mean, he's never going to open up a school, but can you imagine? Um, uh, he's willing to assault a woman uh, that paid tuition. Yeah, the, the, the women that he's calling pajama mamas that he's going to spray and all this kind of stuff with the whatever. He's a super soaker. They're actually paying five hundred dollars a month for their child to attend. And this is how Umar is behaving. But the thing is, when he says things like I'm going to bomb them, this is all these are all statements of violence, you know, and, and that is uh, how he's talking and what he's saying he's going to do. Uh, that's you, you get prosecuted for doing something like that. Can you imagine your principal? You go to your child's principal uh, and there's something going on with your child and, and they take out a water gun, uh, a super soaker and, and spray you down. I mean, come on now. I mean, that that's like assault. I mean, they would consider it would be considered to be assault. And uh, someone's going to have a criminal record. Someone probably won't go to jail. Umar. Anyway, uh, thanks for subject gamers and drinks and conscious Jedi. Conscious Jedi also says uh, he needs to turn that heat down. I think he already did, to be honest with you. I think he already turned the heat down. That's why he's behaving like this. All right, here we go. Go to sleep late. Drop your kid off late. Sex crumbs. Pajama mamas. Where you at? Where my pajama mamas at? Where my pajama? I know some of y'all on here. Stop lying. Where my pajama mama? Some of y'all drop your son off late to school this morning in your pajamas. Stop lying. Stop lying. Some of y'all drop your son off late this morning in your damn pajamas with sex crumbs on you. Okay, I'm back. Be business oriented with the school, not friendly. Be business oriented. There we go. We have a pajama mama. She confessed. Sister, no more pajama mamas. Show up. With what you have, I got money. I got car. I got. Yeah, I'm sorry, everybody. This it's the internet's got it's, it's gotten unstable. <laughs> okay, uh, we have some serious technical difficulties, and I'm tempted to just end the live stream here, and we'll just have to figure something else out. Uh, to get through this video. Maybe we just set up a live stream where we just do this and um, it's still showing that my internet connection is unstable, uh, but I am back on ethernet. Uh, let me see. Can you all see and hear me? Let me know. Yeah, let me just go back here. I'll oh, keep letting it play. Same, right? Y'all get the women with your money with your looks, with your car, with your jewelry, with your bank account. That's how y'all get the queens, right? Y'all lead with materialism because that's all you got. You lead with what you have. You get the queens with what you have. I got money. I got car. I got house. I got this. You See, Umar, Umar has none of that. I mean, he gets donations, but obviously he doesn't get enough donations, but he doesn't have his own vehicle. He doesn't have his own house. Okay lead with possessions you lead with what you have i lead with who i am with who i am i get the queens for who i am you get the queens for what you have okay. you see the difference i will always be who i am but you may not always have that that's the difference between me and y'all I serve the community. I serve the people. I serve the children. I Boy, he's spitting all over the place. Um, listen, we're going to have to come back to this because the audio, the video quality is, is really, really poor. I was looking on my phone um, and there's still, let's see, probably about 15 more minutes to this video. 
Um, so let, let's let's end it right here. I apologize, everyone. Uh, tomorrow, I, I okay. Uh, tomorrow we might be able to do, let's say from. Uh, it had to be a little bit slightly earlier and we can only go for like maybe an hour. That'd be all uh, uh, the time that we have. Um, but the, the video quality is so poor and I don't want to lodge you in that way. So what this is going to be the plan. Um, if I'm able to get here tomorrow and I hope you guys can too, we, we will just specifically view that segment of the video where he's talking like this. And I'm thinking uh, that it should take less than 45 minutes to do. And that'll be uh, the plan uh, for tomorrow. And I'll do my best to get the uh, my to get, I'll talk with my ISP and see what's going on and, and make sure that the best of my ability that we have enough bandwidth to actually run a show efficiently. I just don't like the idea of having poor quality uh, video uh, streaming because people definitely need to see Umar behaving in this way. And I also think it's going to be good because we're only going to play this section. And that way uh, people can actually come back and watch it and only have to watch that section. And that's going to be more than enough to show the type of person that Umar is. Um, so we're going to end it right there. I want to thank everyone inside the Cookie Crush chat for tuning on in today. Thanks for everyone who uh, sent in Super Chats today. I appreciate that as well. Uh, also, I want to thank the mods for handling the business. And again, I apologize to everyone. Uh, also, tomorrow I have a whole bunch of videos going up for members. So you guys can expect that uh, tomorrow. And again, like I said, I'm going to thank everyone uh, for tuning on in. Um, we will be back tomorrow to probably a little bit earlier and we'll probably go 45 minutes to an hour to be a quick show. But we're going to focus on just that segment uh, right there. That's going to be the plan. All right. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. We're not going to play outro song. We're just going to end it right there. Uh, thank you all so much. Even though we had technical difficulties, I do know one thing. The Cookie Crush chat is undefeated. All right. I'll talk to you all soon. Love you all. Peace.